Where is the stress coming from? The girl that you with now that don't like the fact that you did that shit. If one of your exes, Terrence, came back on some, oh, I'm grounding shit, I'm going to point to the life rack. Your girl ain't going to like that thing out. Your girl ain't going to like that thing out. Terrence, <laughs> <laughs> you got my fucking nerves, She ain't going to like it. Terrence, you, know, you know, know what they're you not too like. Women are. You can go to art school, right? And then you're going to learn how to paint with these brushes. And then you're going to take two years. You're going to get a job. You're going to figure out how you're going to get on your feet to pay the art school back. And right when you go to get into the industry, if you ain't go straight there, they're going to say, okay, so we're going to use this brush. And you're going to say, uh, what brush is that? Oh, this brush came out last year. Mm -hmm. But your education is two years old. You know how to paint. You know how to mix the red with the mm -hmm. blue. And I'm going to get some purple. They got now a digital thing where I don't got to do all of that. I could just hit this button right here and it's purple. And now guess who has to learn again? The motherfucker paying school back. <laughs> yeah. These motherfuckers <laughs> just said, they know. And you then, paying school back and learning again. Uh -huh. And you asking him, hold on, wait, did he say, what button did he say? Because <laughs> I got to pay my bill later. It's tough. I swear, I swear bro. I swear. <laughs> it's, it's funny, but dark. It is funny, but dark. <laughs>
We had an offset video drop on Patreon. Shout out to everybody who checked that one out. That album's actually dope as fuck, bro. It is a great album. That's a dope album. We're going to talk is. a little bit more about that. But um, we had that go up. We had some videos go up on YouTube. So if you still subscribe to the YouTube, the 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 go-getter YouTube channel, all the Niners over there. Yeah, we yeah. had some drops. We got shit in motion, for sure. That's how it's supposed uh-huh. to be. Like, this is how it's supposed to be. Like, shit yeah. this, shit it. This. Mm-hmm. But, uh... It was been it's been a chill week for sure. I got some plans for the next couple of weeks. We got Halloween coming up. Oh so, yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. It's you about know, to be lit. My boys first. So we we all dressing up, the whole family. That's I right. got my costume and everything. That's why I want to You know what your bro. costume gonna be? Yeah, hell yeah. I'm not saying it. It's a surprise. But you know what I could tell you because we're not doing like a uh a party no more. We going. Now nah, you're right, and I'm I might not be I might not be I might be in town for Halloween. Might okay. not. I might, Still up you, I might tell you what we what we gonna do. Y'all gonna be uh We're not doing Incredibles. Woody and Buzz. No. And your girl could be uh I don't know. See, that's my thing with Halloween. I ain't wanna have no uh predictable yeah. costume. I ain't wanna go with something that is niggas like, oh, I know what he is. What Batman. we doing, what we doing for Halloween is like, of course you'll know it when you see it, but it's not something that's gonna you're gonna see a bunch of. You yeah. could see a bunch of like the superheroes and uh, you know, mm-hmm. we could have made him a little pumpkin or a little bear or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But nah. It's a little Halloween costumes that you uh I feel like this is what we should this is what we should say. The Halloween costumes that it, that a girl could wear that's low key, like legit. Like the the incredible joint. I don't want to see the girl. girl. Yeah. We we dress up like that because she would low key look fire in that. Or the is that weird? No, I don't think it's weird. I just think, you know. Why do you think she would look fire in it? Because I fucking grew up on Incredibles. That's why. So, is that weird? It's weird that I think that that'd be dope. I don't know. I don't think it's weird. I think that's dope. Like, <laughs> is it weird that, that, you know? Nah, the Kim Possible She-Go costume. Some, some of the ladies get okay, off with see? that. Okay, You weird for that? Am I weird? That's what I'm saying. Am I weird for that? I don't think you were. It's like if you said she go was fine, they'd be like, y'all were weird. We were kids and she was fine. Yeah. She but was, is that weird? Is that weird? Green and dark. Is that weird? She had that evil vibe. She was like an evil Kim type. You know what I'm I definitely wasn't checking for Kim. Right. We wasn't rocking with Kim. She was Kim. But she go? She go. She go. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> All Sets album dropped and that joint was. It was, I think, it was very solid. It was very yeah. solid. That's what exceeded my expectations. I thought it wasn't going to be as good as it actually ended up being. And that's not me hating on them. That's not, that wasn't me faking on them. I just felt like, you know, solo albums from people who are in groups, the second ones, yeah. you know, they just took a loss, a big loss. So I didn't expect for it to come with that type of energy. And it gets yeah. better when you listen to more of it, right? It does. When you go back. Yeah. So the question that we were, that mm. we were talking about, um, having both albums from Offset, and earlier this year from Quavo, um, you can't help but ask the question, who do you think had the better album between Quavo and Offset? Now, yeah, these albums are literally almost, I think, two months apart from each other. Quavo's came August 15th, and we got, of course, Offset last Friday. But let me say this. Quavo uh-huh. album was 18 tracks, and Offset album was 21 tracks. So it's low-key close. About close. They both did. They both, I would say they both did great for their solo showing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um. Damn, but which one was better? I might lean Quavo just because. Now, let me say. It's early, though. It's early. Yeah, it is. I wrote down songs that immediately I like just looking at the, the track list. Mm-hmm. And I have, damn, I remembered the count when I wrote it down. I have 12 tracks written down from Allset and 11 tracks written down from Quavo. Wow. And I think... Those are just tracks that I fuck with, but like, just to stay on Offset album, it's songs like Dissolve and Skyami featuring that Mango Food dude. Yeah. Uh, healthy. It's songs on that joint that really made me feel like, yo, this joint fire. That healthy joint. It's gonna be healthy. That uh, joint fire. And that's the last Qua- joint on the album. It is, but Quavo got. Quavo's, Quavo Quavo's has, backside of his album is, is to me where a lot of the, yes. the, the hits are. That Focus joint. Focus, Galaxy was fire. Galaxy, the little joint. You, oh, no, you can't. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, we can. He, right. he smoked that. He smoked that. Stain was fire. Stain was fire. What's the joke where he was like? I was kicking doughs, getting money bright and early. Daddy had to take me to my favorite Auntie, Auntie Shirley. Shirley. That's, that's Rocket Power. That was fire. Not Done Yet was fire. And I'm not, not done, done yet. That's one of the, yeah. That was fire. Greatness to end the album was Quavo, fire. Quavo album is better. Because he always said, I must stay focused on. That shit was fire. Nah, yeah. He got Turn Your Click Up With Future. Who with me? Where can I start? Patty Cake. And Patty Cake. Look, now let me tell you. Offset's intro is smoking... Fueled up. It is. Uh, fueled up, for sure. Offset, low-key, the first four tracks on Offset's joint. Say My Grace. On the, phone, uh, on the River, Say My Grace, Worth It, Broad Day. You know what I've been saying all, all week, right? Mask on, 30 piece. I've been saying that all week. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, I've been yeah. saying that all week. Uh, the fan joint is cool. That was the one that dropped. Cool. Yeah. Uh, the freaky joint I didn't like. Freak, freak, freak it's freaky. freaky. Yeah. That's how, hey, look, we ain't gonna say too much about that. Look, you haven't heard shit about that, right? Think about it. We should hear flames coming from this album from Cardi and Offset. Remember his first joint? What was one of the biggest joints? Clout. Clout. Y'all yeah. not checking for the freaky joint? That joint went great, but the other the other joint they did was I. Right. You know, there's a better joint on the album than freaky. The finest can be joint featuring Lotto. Featuring Lotto, yeah. That joint, that Princess Cut. Princess Cut is probably one of my favorites from the uh, two projects to come, come by. You know what's one of my favorite joints from this project, y'all? When a whole pill dissolves. <laughs> you heard that joint? <laughs> yeah. Fire. Is it? That joint is, bro, I'm telling you. That's fire. Night Vision. Night Vision is fire. We're hey, basically look. talking all of this to say, y'all go and do the comparison yourself. Because it's very close. It is very close. Like I said, I wrote down basically the same amount of tracks for both albums. Either way, we could say both of them put out something that we could be proud of, Not considering yet, what sure. they went through. But yeah. They yeah. gave more hope to their solo careers. Yeah. Even though at the end of the day, we still want to see the motherfuckers come together. That's what all I was thinking, too. Every t- when I went back and listened to both these albums, I said, damn, both these niggas should be right there. That we should, we, yeah, they should be doing something together. They really should. I wanted to ask you about the, uh, the Funny Marco situation. Definitely. Yeah, we might as well do that next. Yes. If you don't know who Funny Marco is, he started off on Instagram. I've been following Funny Marco for a long time. Before he started doing interviews, he was, he like, was going to going the Walmart, in- yeah. fucking with people. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Those were some of his best videos. No bullshit. Wow, he's been on the internet for a long time. Yeah, he was going into the Walmart, fucking with people, and then he recently started doing the awkward... Interview shit before yeah. the Bobby chick was doing it, right? You had the what I forget the Zwa or Zwa, forgive me, forgive me if I'm saying it wrong. The girl who's on the pink couch, she did the awkward interview shit first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And believe it or not, uh, what's bro from um Zach Galifianakis did it first. Zach Galifianakis. Remember Zach Galifianakis did, did it, yeah. was interviewing Obama and people, it was just awkward as shit. Yeah. And so he kind of jumped on that wave of that and he does the interviews. And so y'all probably seen that he did an interview with uh, Southside and G Herbo. And at this point, I guess people have been talking about it all week. But people mm-hmm. have been hitting me saying, yo, what do y'all think? Because it was a girl, shout out to her, who, who mentioned us. She was like, I've been arguing with my parents. Okay, and, yeah. and we disagree. I'm like, I don't see what y'all would disagree on, though. What did you... So basically, in the interview, Southside and G Herbo was basically... They just went a little far. They was fucking with Marco. They broke his $30,000 watch. They was throwing shit at him, calling him a bitch. It was bad. It was almost like they knew he was going to be awkward, so they tried to, like, beat him to the awkwardness, but it just ended but it up was just, yeah. looking like they was bullying, bro, a little bit. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the Chicago, Chicago niggas came out and said, oh, y'all not from Chicago, so y'all don't know this is what we do. Or... And you know what? I understood that. I said, damn, he had right. some niggas in the room that identified him as something, and they acted on it. And that's why I said it, it really put him in a fucked up position because he is a man, but mm-hmm. you also are... A platform. So you don't want to muddy your name by standing up for yourself. Sometimes that's the worst part of the shit. And that's more so what we wanted to talk about with this situation. Like, Funny Marco got put in a situation where I got celebrities up here and they low-key being disrespectful. Mm -hmm. I want y'all to even think if you had Beyonce come to your crib and she's supposed to get there at four, she don't get there till six. You ain't got all day. Then she she asking for shit. You like, damn, low key, she being crazy extra, putting me through hell. But I feel like if I speak up for myself on just general respect, I might fucking around and lose my whole opportunity. Right. And y'all might think, who the fuck is G Herbo to lose or whatever? But like, it's, and, and you don't want the negativity. 
And you're right, because at the end of the day, he still got to keep doing that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You want to still keep that door open for other celebrities to come. And if you wild out a little bit, it could turn people away if it's received the wrong way. I think he handled it better than he could have. I'll just I'll say that. Yeah. I wouldn't say that. Do you think they was bullying him? Do you? How you? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. If you look at the video, they was one hundred percent bullying him. And niggas look for the inch, and then they'll take the mile. If you let me nudge you one time and you don't say shit or look like nothing, then they going to push the shit out of you after a while. They're going to they keep, they're going to stay on you, especially like niggas saying that this is, this is, they, they, you're not from Chicago. Think about it, bro. We from PG County. The yeah. niggas that can't get it back, you become the easy target. You the yeah. easy, this lame ass nigga, this, this ugly nigga. Why you laughing? Yeah. Yeah. Why you laughing when you was the fat boy or you, 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 whatever. Mm-hmm. So that the thing is, I'm not saying that he was weak, but they tried him. And since he had to stand on business, mm-hmm. he could, he had to let him do whatever. And Loki, they, they, t- they definitely took that shit too far. Throwing a cup at him, breaking his watch, nah, calling yeah. out his name. It's like, all right, at a certain point, it's not really. Yeah, they was kind of drunk. Yeah, you could tell that what's the name was drunk. Yeah. It's just, who wants to hear from G Herbo anyway? I'm sorry. My thing is, imagine how uncomfortable you have to be. Because you, you know it's recording. These niggas are street niggas. So there's that part. But then they're also celebrities. So there's that part. It's like, damn. It's too, yeah. Like I was telling my girl, I'm like, well, what, what, what I'm going to get up and just start swinging on this nigga? And this is a rapper. This is a, what are the media outlets going to say? I stood up and started swinging on this nigga. Oh, I got smart with him. And now people are going to say... Mm-hmm. That this already... And then you got to think about... You're right. Because if he did do that, right? Yeah. Now, the next celebrity... Let's say you could have potentially had Funny Marco do somebody like a Kerry Washington. Think about it. He don't just interview rappers. He interviews everybody. Yeah. Actresses. You want to interview somebody like a... Like, he was, he shared a message. He was getting ready to try to interview Jada Pinkett. And Jada Pinkett was like, all right, but we ain't talking about a movie type shit. Because he was on some funny shit. You know what I'm saying? In her DM. But he got, like, stars of all different calibers that he trying to interview. Yeah. So he can't just, you know, he can't start scrapping with niggas because you're going to turn certain people away. Like, oh, I'm not about to go to that ghetto-ass platform. You know? Yeah. I was going to say this, too. This is also something that comes with that gimmick, that, that niche that he's in. Yeah. Funny Marco, you are the guy that's going to be awkward. You're going to say, hey, didn't you put an album out last year? Oh, I, I didn't hear it. And it's like, we're going to laugh at it. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, it was dope. Like, mm-hmm. But I was thinking, like, there's some people who take the funny ha-ha route, and then there's people who respond. There's people who get aggressive. Nah, yeah. So I did I'm, see that. The environment that they stepped into, it's like, okay, he about to be playing, so we going to play. And unfortunately, where they from playing is low-key disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yo, it, it definitely went too far. I was I was saying when I saw that, I didn't think that there was real like issue with him or he really didn't, they really didn't like him. I think mm-hmm. he just was playing too much. And Marco and did kind of take the people are so sensitive. People are like, they they threw stuff at him, they broke his watch. Y'all make it seem like they went up there, threw shit at him. Give me your watch, nigga. Broke his watch. They did break his watch though, like threw it on the ground. You didn't see that part. You know what? They took his watch and threw it. That shit broke everywhere. Wow, why did I did not, not why did I not see that? I only saw what's the name handing it back to what's the name? Nah, they sma- they slammed that joint, bro. Damn. That was fucked up. He threw the wa- he threw the cup at him. After he finished it, then was like, my bad, bro. I actually respect you. I, you know? That's the part. Southside is the one that broke the watch. And Southside didn't turn up until G Her- Herbo turned up. Once G Herbo stopped playing, you could tell that nigga was one of those. G Herbo. Yeah, he was I'm with, sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Could you? I swear, man. That's how Siri do. Siri fuck with G Herbo. <laughs> I'm sorry. What the fuck did y'all say? <laughs> did you want me to play? <laughs> but nah, I mean, a lot of people were saying that, Marco, you can dish it. You the one that's normally on your funny shit. When they came back at you with it, you should have came back at them with your shit. Yeah. We got he, com- comics back in the day would not let you... You're going to fight them before you out funny them. Yeah. Like, you weren't about to clown Bernie Mac. You weren't about to clown even somebody like an Eddie Murphy. Like, or Cat Williams. 
Yeah, you're not going to. All right, bet I'm going to just gonna keep going at you then. Yeah. And we're just going to be in a back and forth. But that's because my talent right there, my talent is there with this comedy yeah. shit. When you, this niche shit, this interviewing shit, like I said, we got a whole bunch of new Oprahs, right? You're really all just the same. At the end of the day, your show is who you bring on. Yeah. So you put people into your environment, but at the end of the day, when shit go left, you're simply a nigga like this. You're simply a nigga that's interviewing. Yeah. Because this ain't, look, even with these niggas who play sports, if the conversation go left, now it's a nigga that plays sports. <laughs> <laughs> you know, y'all don't, not shitting on anybody, but you know. No, that's the truth. People don't go through media training and all of this stuff to become like you used to have to. Mm -hmm. These days, it's like, oh, you know what? I have an idea, and what I'm going to do is with this idea, I'm going to interview people. Oh, I got the best idea ever. It's a food channel. And our first guest going to be Rachel Ray. No, our first guest going to be... <laughs> our first I'm guest going to be Gordon Ramsay. No, I, I'm going to retire. Look, it's a food channel. So as opposed to just sitting down talking, we're going to be cooking. And our first guest is going to be Jamie Foxx. And it's like the only reason people are going to watch is not because of the great idea. It's because... We're going to watch Jamie Foxx do Jamie the Fox. idea. And that's the thing, too, about some of these shows. When you can't get the guests, and that's where a Funny Marco was in a fucked up spot. Funny Marco can't just sit there by himself and get 300,000, 400,000, a million views. I got to be able to do this with other people. Therefore, I can't compromise, I can't compromise. this platform and then nobody want to come because then I don't have a show. And that is the, that's the catch-22 of doing the interviews, famous people shit. And that's where yeah. podcasting has gotten so muddy because a show like what me and T do, we do. We don't. If we interview, if we started doing guests, we, we, this thing would grow fast. If we started interviewing people that were already, no, I'm not, even, not even just that, but if we started interviewing people that were already famous, yeah. we would bring their fan bases and a lot of our viewership would come from their fan bases. Yeah. So most of these niggas that start podcasts, they're just interviewing their of their friends that are also famous or people in the same industry or close like industries with them. And so now podcasting has become interviewing. I've been saying it for a long time. For New long time. Oprah's. Yeah. Yeah. You have. But I mean, hey. So, I mean, y'all can feel how y'all want about the, the funny Marco situation. I mean, there's a, a bunch of different ways to, to look at it, but. Real quick, I want to give a quick uh, big shout out to the Las Vegas Aces. One of the best seasons in NBA history. WNBA. I'm oh, sorry. WNBA, WNBA history. Back-to-back uh, -back champs. I think you got to put respect on that. Franchise, we're looking at a fran we're look I think I don't think I don't see any signs of slowing down. They won they won that game without two starters. Who's their best players on that team? Uh best players on the team is of course Asia Wilson, the point guard. Oh shit, Asia Wilson plays for them, the the, the MVP chick. Yeah, but she ain't get MVP. It's just bullshit. Who she got MVP? Brianna Stewart. And she plays for the Aces. Mm -hmm. No, Brianna Stewart plays for the Liberty. New York. She played for the Storm. Oh, she she beat my me. She always beats my Mystics. That's that's like the Grim Reaper for us. Hardaway, did she play for the Storm or the Aces or the Mystic or the? Play, she used to. Play, she plays for the. See, I'm not trying to go Liberty. She played for the Liberty. Used to play for the Storm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Damn. I just want to give a shout out to the WNBA champs and shout out to the MVP. I seen them talking they shit. Mm -hmm. It was like night night. What's the chick night night? Yeah. Was that Asia Wilson? No, I forget who that. Girl I don't was. know that girl's name. They was they look they was teed up. Shout out to them, world champions. They gotta feel good. I hate them, low key. <laughs> but I love them, but I hate them because they they only lost like six games this year, and one of them games was to my Mystics. I swear, if we would have ever get so far to be able to play them in a like how the Liberty just uh -huh. did, we would win. I know we would. Are there series seven games like uh? Nah, it's five games. It's five. Oh, okay. Well, shout out to them. Shout out to y'all late. Shout out to y'all, you know? And the W's growing. You see all them stars in the building? Issa Rae. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You love to see it. You love to see it. One thing that you cannot deny about the WNBA is that it is growing. Nah, you can't deny it. It is definitely 110% growing. Hey, guess what? Colorado took an L, and guess what? You stop seeing all these niggas that's famous outside the games. Why y'all stop going? 
No bullshit. Where's all the celebrities that's outside? Yeah. No bullshit. I mean, yeah, it's still a few. There's still a few that's walking around, but I ain't really been seeing no buffs hats and shit for celebrities like you did the first two weeks. I'm telling you, you gotta win in order to keep that that. Gotta win. Going. What y'all think about? Y'all know you want to say something about your uh, your shirt. He's got on a. Uh, Come on, man. That's my boy Levi. You already know. Get it. This the Target. I was in the Target getting my uh, boy some milk. You got that from Target? Yeah. Target got some dope tees, bro. Have you watched Attack on the Titan? <laughs> Maybe it's me. What? This is also a 2XL. I would never wear a T like that. But you'll wear a... Uh, and no, I won't wear a Gucci, cool Gucci. Oh, I thought you were You'll wear saying. a builder bed sweater. This look like the sweater you pick out for your builder bed. Fuck out of here, boy. You look like you put this together, <laughs> Architectural Digest. Fuck out of here. I'm just saying, like, I wouldn't wear... What's wrong with a T? It's a T. <laughs> he started going at me crazy. <laughs> I'm just saying, the re remember when I told you about the Superman thing? Like, the nigga that's sitting there with the bat symbol, right? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you're Batman? What the fuck? <laughs> Terrence, nah, this but is like a... You know, I get it. I, there was this dude in the gym who had an Attack on Titan shirt. Got I said, that's fine. He's with the look, with the Nike. Come on, bro. You see the red? You dress like the nigga that has a bunch of DVDs. <laughs> And Terrence, what are you dressed like, boy? Fuck out of here. You, you dress like, you... like the nigga that got DVDs in the end. I got that new Fall of the Dogs on CD. <laughs> I was like, how does this nigga get it on CD? You dress like a Pottery Barn employee. Fuck out of here. You, you dress like you do the class with a girl shaped a pot. And gay. <laughs> 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 All right, y'all. Hey, you know what? I did want to play this for you, T, because I felt like this was something that is... When I play this clip, right, it's a it's a guy, it's a lady talking about friendship to a to a guy on a podcast. Shout out to them. It's called the Shameless. What's their podcast called? I want to make sure I get it right. It's called the So Shameless Pod. Shout out to them. I don't know where y'all are, but shout out to them. I came across this clip on IG Reels, which good for y'all. But I'm gonna play the clip, and you'll be able to see exactly where I'm gonna go with this. Turn your drink so I can hit. I should have on headphones, but. Y'all be calling people y'all friends because you play basketball with them. That's just a you know. If I've been playing ball with this nigga for three years on the same two days, how is that not taking time? You don't know him. You don't know his mama. You don't know his sister. You don't know nothing about these people. I don't feel it's fair that you, because you do, you feel like you have to be on the ends to consider about somebody a friend. It means that that person don't have some sort of loyalty towards me or me towards them, even if I don't know his mother. That weird and you guys build these these fake strong relationships on 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 fleeting moments you don't know if that is a bum you don't know if that is a axe murderer all you know is he suited and booted on sunday for basketball and you walking around like yeah this is my friend but your friend just murdered 14 people in crown heights and you writing a letter to the judge like oh but we play basketball every sunday he's such a great teammate y'all are stupid he averages a double double <laughs> hey look <laughs> Shout out to the show Shameless Podcast. They actually have some... Uh, hey, that's a nice clip. Some, I like that cool clip. cool shit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it opens up the conversation to me about the differences between men and women and how we make friends. Let me just say this. Damn, I wish we had some women on the podcast. Go ahead. I know. If it's a nigga that goes to the gym with Women me, listen to this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a guy that goes to the gym with me and he has a fantasy football team and then I don't have a fantasy football team. Every time we see each other, we just say what's up. But then I find out through just talking in between sets, oh shit, you do fantasy? Bro, should I start such and such? I have, you know, we've had relationships you like that. Still have them to this day. Yeah. Niggas that I just do not even talk to, out, I don't know anything about them outside of that. They come to this gym and they have fantasy. If I see bro in the club, we're going to get a drink. That's my man. Yeah. Oh, that's my boy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That is how easy it is for us to make friends. Mm -hmm. This whole, you don't know his mom. You don't know anything about him. But for men, though, it's really not that deep for us to make friends. And that's why we don't be losing friends like that. Because the friends that we do have, it's never that deep. Yeah. It is. like we, We've had lifetime, lifelong friends that we've known for a long time. But when it comes to like, the reason y'all relationships fold and ours don't fold is because we don't really think about shit that deep. Yeah. But it also could be a negative. But what you think about that? 
Y'all see how he be rapping like shit, and then he just l- say everything that come to his brain, and then just say, but what you think? About which part, nigga? This nigga just told a whole hypothesis, thesis, opening statement, closing statement. He got a footer in there. Terry, just say what the fuck you think. Build a bit. Build a bit, but what you look like? You look like a villain, boy. You got on a black outfit. The fuck? This nigga looks bar ready. Terrence, what you, you look, look like, like? C- you look like you work at a cigar bar, boy. That looks like a cigar hat. Okay, boy, you look like you work at the Yankee Candle, boy. Oh yeah, that's the yeah yeah. And you boy. where do you look like you work? A weird motherfucker. This nigga look like he works at the DVD shop. But you trying to be cool with it. But we know what, what time you on. <laughs> look, I feel like women and men look at friendships different. Like men, we look at the shit for what it is for right now, and this all oh, this what it is. You know. Uh-huh. You never gonna see men looking at like a post that says a male friendship is supposed to be this. It's supposed to be that. We don't give a fuck. But I think with the ladies, I think they have an expectation about what a friendship is supposed to be, mm-hmm. and then that's how they judge their friendships. Like, well, you know what? I don't know your mom, and I don't know who you really are. So therefore, I'm not gonna call you my friend. I feel like they look at it as if they actually have to write their friends down at the end of the year and submit it, you know? <laughs> These are my legit friends. We don't give a fuck. I only see bro right here when he comes in and when he leaves. It could be a situation where it's like, hey, what up, bro? Think about it. At the old spot. Mm-hmm. I used to call him the neighborhood dope dealer. Nigga yeah. used to walk around. Next thing you know, he's in a caddy. Yeah. I said, <laughs> my man. And when I see him, this nigga could be serving the block. But when I see him, I'm like... That's my guy. Yeah. I don't need to know what his, his, what his life is. But you know what? I will say this. What me and you seem to be talking about is being cordial with a nigga. I think to call a nigga like what you were just talking about, the nigga you see in the gym, and you talk about fantasy football, uh-huh. to call him your friend but does you see look what? a little... Wait, I mean, you just are more of a... We're just more friendly. There's nothing but for him to gain been with doing me. doing this? For a couple years, I've known this man. I don't know everything about him. All right, now but you're I, right. I mean, and but that's what she was saying, and she actually did make a good point. We went to school with people from everywhere. Think yeah. about our circle in school. It was Maryland, Pennsylvania, Nebraska, Virginia. Remember, lucky we didn't know. We didn't Florida, know shit. Florida. We didn't know shit about. Wendell was from Atlanta. <laughs> mm-hmm. We didn't know shit about what. Any of them have. Any of them did before they got to school. And we never had those conversations about anything. That's why they say men will be in a situation where your man, they were saying, not to make it deep. Yeah. But they were saying women know, all women know somebody that's been sexually assaulted. But men always say they don't know anybody that's ever done that type shit. Mm -hmm. And I guess the two kind of go hand in hand with how we have friendships, though. We don't, we don't. Disclose as much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We would never be in a situation to know that. Nah, yeah, you're right. We got the hard exterior shell, keep everything chill. It's also a fault of ours, too. Being with our friends is more so about, like, not thinking of any of that shit. Yeah. That's on the opposite. It's like friendship for women is about vulnerability and sharing dark shit low-key with each Mm -hmm. other. So I can see how they like, yo, how could you even... You ever meet a nigga and y'all, you ever meet a dude and then all of a sudden y'all just talking about some deep shit you don't even really know, bro, but y'all have that deep, y'all might have a deep ass talk. Remember you and Lucky, it's funny you bring up Lucky. Uh Remember you and Lucky was drunk as fuck and you said, yo, me and Lucky had a heart to heart. I'll never forget that. Mm -hmm. We didn't know that nigga like that. We was both crying. Damn. And it was just like, yo, what this nigga crying crying about? This suburban ass nigga. Nah, it's just when you talk about you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But like when somebody is like, first of all, I'm the type nigga, if you cry in front of me, I'm going to be like, damn. You know? Yeah. <laughs> if I can relate or if I feel for you, like if you my man, then, you know what I'm saying? But you're right, though. We could, we dead ass had a heart to heart, and I don't even know. I have no idea anything about this nigga. Probably. I don't know this nigga. He's a cool guy. He goes to this school. Mm-hmm. That's all it takes. But that clip stood out to me because I'm like, damn, you know what? Our friendships be different. But you know what? At the same time, our friendships are also come with less response. They come with less requirements. Mm -hmm. I've known Denzel for 20 years. I don't talk to Denzel every day. But when my baby shower came, he was right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He might have invited me to shit throughout the year. I didn't go. You know what I'm saying? And if he didn't come to my baby shower. It wouldn't be like, 
he could hit me the next week and I'll be like, yo, what's up? Yeah. It's not that big of a deal for us. Mm -mm. I know if I needed some money or if he needed something for me, it doesn't the, oh, well, you need this for me, but you didn't come to my. That shit don't matter to us. It just doesn't matter. I think sometimes you could be living your life in a certain wave where you need people in it, and you can live your life in a way where you don't need people in it. Like, I think it depends on who you are, low key, because there's people out there that don't need friends, so they don't do the things necessary to maintain and keep friends. And it could be looked at as shady, you know? But the yeah. bad thing is, damn, in my life, I don't need to maintain friendships to keep my sanity or my happiness. Yeah. So what that means is, you will be the friend that is a little distant, that's not responsive, and it can come off like you don't give a fuck, but really, your happiness isn't rooted with keeping up your communication with your friends. Like, I, uh, top of this month, I just started going to DMV Iron Gym, right? Mm -hmm. Brand new gym for me, and it's only because I live close by now, but in my old gym, I was so about, like, knowing everybody. I was so about... Wanting to go in and saying what up to everybody until I had all of those friendships. And I realized the taskfulness. I don't know if y'all know this from my, my, my fellas that's in the gym. You go in the gym and now that you know everybody, you low-key can't even start your workout. You got you to gotta find a corner and take your pre-workout because if you take it before you go in, I'm going I'm saying what up to him. I'm saying what's up to him. Oh, what you been on? Hey, look, now I see fantasy football, bruh. You want to give me his whole lineup? Now, you know what I'm saying? I'm an hour before my workout. So now when I walk in now, I realize, damn, you know what? I've had so many opportunities in this gym to be more friendly. And I've watched myself kill it. Like, even as simple as this. Bruh was watching me do curls, and he looked at me and went like this. And I went just like that. That's uh -huh. the dude that I normally would be cool with. Because I'm the type of nigga that once you do something like that, I'm like, all right, back. this dude's a cool guy. So if I'm getting a paper towel or some shit or whatever, it's like, yo. And you know how you gradually build You gradually that? build relationships, yeah. I start realizing I'm in a point in my life now where I don't really feel like I need that in my life. Yeah. And when I was first going to the gym that I used to go to, it was all about being more social. I'm only saying all of this to say, like, low-key, it's a real slippery slope between... The life you live in versus yeah. the life that's expected. Like everybody thinks, and even chicks, you know, this is what a relationship, this is what a relationship is supposed to be, this is what a friendship is supposed to be like. And you can't say that be y'all friends if yeah. And low key, it really is just about what vibe you on. There's a vibe where I need friends and there's a vibe where I don't. Nah, yeah. That's I that's actually something that you had that I didn't have. Remember, I, when I first went to Terrace's gym. Wow, it's crazy I'm saying it's your gym. It's both our fucking gym. Nah, it was my gym. Because this bitch-ass nigga was going to... No offense to people who do this, but this bitch-ass nigga was stayed up in Planet Fitness swearing that he was fine up in there. All right, bet. Oh, yeah, because I was. I didn't need all the extra shit that y'all had, but once I got too strong, Planet Fitness only has weights up to, like, 60. So if you want Goblet Squad of 80 or 90, or if you want to, you know what I'm saying... Do something with something heavier than 60s. They don't have the dumbbells for that. So I had to go to this nigga's gym. But long story less long, when I got there, it was like, it's almost like going to a club. Because you knew everybody. Mm -hmm. And when I came and started going to One Life, I didn't have that. And it actually felt better. It feels better me now going in this gym and not knowing nobody. I could just focus on my workout. And I love everybody at that gym. Yeah. yeah. You know? But then you start realizing, damn, I've been here for three hours. Mm -hmm. I just start, I've been here for an hour, and I'm just starting to work out. Like the dude said, you can't tell me me spending, you know what I'm saying, playing ball with this dude two days a week for three years. You can't tell me I'm not putting in time. Like you said, we would sometimes be in the gym two hours, and it's the same people in there. Mm -hmm. So we low-key are spending mad time together. I'm like, hey, bro, nah, no way, no. You know what I'm saying? It's you like the barbershop. Yeah, yeah. Like, think about the niggas in the barbershop. We don't know them niggas, what they go home and do. We just know you here to get the mohawk. You're here <laughs> to get the twist. 
We used to know niggas nah, like yeah, that. Yeah, I used to, yeah. We used to see niggas that would get a mohawk, and then we we all are right back next weekend. This nigga's mohawk grew back. My dark sees that grew back. Yeah. It was to the point where we knew what you was going to get. I, I could tell you what he was going to get from the vending machine. Yeah. I've just been here with him every weekend. He's going to get the red Skittles. I don't know if he's a killer. Yeah. Exactly. But I don't know what he does when he leave out eight. It could just be red Skittles. We would see that nigga at the Nationals game and go, red Skittles. Yeah. My dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. He ain't gonna know what the fuck we talking mm-hmm. about. We could be friends with a nigga because we the same, fan of the same team. That's it. He like the red. Oh, I just started going to the school. He's a Redskins fan. I mean, he's a Commanders fan. You have no idea how right, many bet. how many relationships that we have. Yeah. Where it's just or like how that. many ices have been broke? How how many times I broke the ice with just that? I, I know you. Uh, you know, I go out to Seattle and my girl's cousin Tyra. Her dude uh, is a Seahawks fan. Didn't know dude from from Adam. But when I get out there. Every time I see him, we could chop it up, Seahawks, Commander shit, and it's whatever. It's not like uh, it's not like an awkward thing that we have to do. It's just the easiest icebreaker. Mm-hmm. And I'm look, I'm not sitting there thinking this motherfucker might be an axe murderer. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not thinking that. Hey, yeah, but that's a good combo. That's a good combo. Sure. Conversation. I want you to get into what you was talking about with the CGI shit because no, first we're gonna talk about this. I want to talk about the weird shit that's going on in the NFL. Okay. And I'm, but I'm, I'm getting ready to get into my conspiracy theorist. Oh shit! Uh, hat. You want to send a disclaimer for the ladies? So no, this, ladies, this is not a. Dis- so they don't skip. <laughs> nah, ladies, this this is not something that you want to skip because low key, I mean, I mean, it's just weird. I'll say this: the NFL just recently had that lady in the stands, right? This lady in the stands, the Asian, that Asian chick. lady, yes, right. And she was looking like she was like acting like a fan, right? Uh-huh. And people was like, you know what? Fuck that! This is a fake fan. A paid actor, gotta be, right? They did the research, and they ended up saying that she wasn't a fake fan. She's a fan of the Chargers. If y'all haven't seen it, just look up, look that up. But she came out and said she's not a fake fan. They found a picture of her with a Vikings jersey. She said, oh, yeah, I, I grew up in Minnesota, so, you know, I love my Chargers and my Vikings. Look. Okay. All right. NFL. All right. We're going to let y'all rock with that, I guess. Uh huh. But it's just hard to act, uh, like that makes sense with the lady saying, but the way he was acting at the game, why did we point that out? Yeah. Why did we see that that way? We're not crazy. We watch this game she every said, single Sunday. And they said they got season tickets and in the second row of every game. But well, why are we just seeing this weird shit from you? And you do you not think that you look like an actress? Anyway, look, hey, that's us being bullshit, right? That's a, yeah. good. Let's go back to this weekend again. Uh, prayers up for the dude. I think his name is Damian Harris. Plays for the Buffalo Bills, right? Uh huh. Buffalo Bills played the Giants. Was it Monday night? Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Buffalo Bills played the Giants on Monday night or Sunday night. It's a prime time game. Everybody's watching. This dude, Damian Harris, goes down, right? Uh huh. And I'm not saying nothing. Prayers up for the guy. I'm not saying nothing about him. The only thing funny about the Damian Harris thing is the. The, the, the initials, but whatever. Did you see the ambulance that came out that had Hamlin 3 in the windows of the ambulance? Wow, that I is... I did see that. Yeah, you know what? That's some real nice, Weird you know... shit. That's some nice, what do you call it? Uh, Not memorandum, but like decorate... Or, or you're prepared for somebody to see this ambulance. You do not put a sticker on your truck or you don't put a sticker on a car unless you want somebody to see it. You know what I'm saying? Why the fuck? So y'all, y'all have a dedicated ambulance in building for when somebody goes out. That's what the NFL they is always, now. They have always have an ambulance on standby. That's a fact. Just okay. in case a nigga needs to be taken, taken to, to the, the to the hospital. hospital. Look, okay. Cool. Why well, y'all the fuck? got y'all souped up? Y'all might as well put some Rams on this bitch. Nah, no bullshit. Y'all got D Hamlin. Y'all got. Three D Hamlin in the window? Am I tripping NFL? Nah, that's wild. And it's almost it? like you knew you would need the ambulance again soon. Like y'all don't think that that's fucking weird? It is weird. It is weird. I don't give a damn about. And just going back to the going back to the girl from the game. Did you see her the next morning? Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. What she do? She was on the motherfucking Pat McAfee show. They interviewed her. Oh, and, and, she and said, people was like, so you mean to tell me 
that this working class person who has season tickets is free on Monday night and then Tuesday morning is on the Pat McAfee show with a real nice webcam, set, real nice professional looking setup. It didn't look like they That's she picked what up I'm on her saying. MacBook. She on there to clean she up. Had, oh, I am not a uh, AI guys. I'm real. <laughs> <laughs> bro, she had, she had like, bro, she had like professionally, like the way her shit was like lit, it was like, yo, you was prepared big time for this on a Tuesday morning. You had to work. Nothing, no kids to watch. It was weird. It's weird. And the Damar Hamlin situation, look, the dude's name is Damian Harris. Damar Hamlin, I don't know why I was just like, yo, the NFL is weird. The NFL is just weird as shit. Y'all having that ambulance with Damar Hamlin's name in the back. To me, that's just like, y'all knew y'all were going to have to put somebody in the ambulance again. And it's like, they don't want you to forget what happened type shit on some weird shit. On some, it feels like I'm in an episode of it's fucking like Black It's like the nigga Mary. that yeah. got into a car crash and he keep talking about the car crash to the point where you like, yo, bro, you're good. Yeah. Let's <laughs> move past it. Anyway, more NFL shit, right? The Chiefs lost that first game to the Lions. Why? Because for some weird fucking reason, Kadarius Tony was not catching the ball. Mind you, look in this team. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Mind you, nigga was wide open. I remember that. He just dropped the ball. And you can make a very good argument that if Kadarius Tony catches those balls, right? The Chiefs win. The Chiefs win. The Chiefs have not lost since. Okay. But have you noticed, right? This Taylor Swift thing is very convenient. Is it not? Holy shit. Travis Kelsey, who's on our reigning Super Bowl champion team, they just won the Super Bowl. Yeah, they did. The biggest tight end, the best tight end in the world is now dating the biggest star in the world, Loki. Biggest musician in the world. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the videos of the people blatantly just running right past Pat Mahomes? Have you seen those videos? There was a video where y'all played them, and there's a video from the Jets game. Bro was running like a million miles per hour, ran right past Pat Mahomes. They have a video from y'all game where instead of tackling Pat Mahomes, y'all DB just runs right into the receiver. Fucking stupid ass. Um, uh, I fucking hate him. I hate his guts. Mathis. Damari Mathis. Yeah. Why did he do that? Why did he do that? Why did the other dude run past Pat Mahomes? It's because the NFL has an agenda for the Chiefs to go back to the Super Bowl. How big would it be to have Taylor Swift and that whole thing make it all the way to the Super Bowl? The Swifties? Look at all the commercials they got ready. Swifties, this is, a, this is what football is, Swifties. Keep up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're supposed to believe y'all did all this on the fly. Did you people on the Thursday night? That's me with my conspiracy. You did, know? You, did you people on the Thursday night game? And you know I love this. Uh, did you people on the Thursday night game? They had the 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 big artwork where it was like a it was like an art picture of Pat Mahomes in the front. They had Travis Kelsey and they had, I think it might have been um Chris Jones, but Taylor Swift was on it. And then every week. And everybody's like, yo. This shit is so weird. They had her ass on an NFL Instagram, I'm sorry, Twitter page header, and it said Swift fans, whatever. First of all, the NFL has been super weird about the Taylor Swift thing from the start. Mm -hmm. And that's why people have been coming out saying, and dear NFL, you have a fan base full of grown ass men that do not give a fuck. No disrespect. She the boogeyman. No disrespect. But we don't give a fuck about Taylor Swift. Even with, like, it, it's just weird. I get it, though. I get that you want to capitalize on the fans. I get it. Taylor Swift is arguably bigger than the NFL. You I know think what I'm saying? The, the like, <laughs> well, but then again, I would say that she's not bigger than the NFL. The, the NFL has 32 teams that have millions of fans. But Taylor Swift does bring a lot, a lot of motherfuckers. The script for the NFL to me has always been a real thing. Like that thing is so funny that they, they even did a, the screen, the little, the little commercial about mm -hmm. it. I think they really do have a script. I think it is definitely in the script for the Chiefs to go back to the Super Bowl, bro, and and for them to be a dynasty. Do you see how people are talking about the Chiefs like they're a dynasty? You're not a dynasty until you win three, right? Mm -hmm. Until you win like back to back. Yeah. 
They, they got two. I guess you could call them a dynasty. You could call the Chiefs a dynasty. They, they only won two Super Bowls. But no, matter of fact, is it three now? No, it's 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 two. Pat, two Super Bowls. Pat got two. But all, they just always go every year. So it is like a special. We've seen thing more blatant missed calls and non calls this year, I swear, than any other year. Like the, the NFL, they actually might be on some script shit. This nigga Aaron Rodgers about to make the one of the best comebacks ever with the Achilles thing. It's just a weird. lot of weird shit happening. No way. First of all, I see him out there throwing the ball. And to me, you really pushing it. I think they really wanted to go Chiefs Jet. I don't think they anticipated the Aaron Rodgers thing. I don't think they anticipated the Dolphins being as good as they are. I think the NFL has a script, but like it ain't like you go on script. Like shit could happen type shit. It's but they have a plan. Yeah. yeah. 100%. I feel like all sports is like that. Yeah. Like, like last year it could have been Lakers, Celtics, but it was Nuggets Heat. Yeah. You yeah. don't think they wanted it to be Bird Magic again? Yeah, yeah, they wanted that. You didn't think they wanted LeBron to go up against, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm just, I, I don't know. You know I, li- I live for shit like that, bro. For, to me, there's no such thing as a coincidence. I don't believe in it. I don't think, when people say, oh, well, maybe it's just, I don't know, it's a coincidence. I don't believe in shit like that, bro. Shit happens for a fucking reason. Nah, 100%. All right, we're taking the conspiracy glasses off. Y'all, let us know what y'all think about that. The NFL's on some weird shit. Ladies, that wasn't so bad, right? That wasn't terrible. Okay, um, and they're still going to do the fucking picks. <laughs> <laughs> the TL was in an uproar this week over a clip that was shared by, uh, I think it was a, somebody shared it, but it was, it's a show called Prom Pack on Disney+. Plus. Um, and in that clip, there was a basketball game scene, and in the stands, like the fans of the basketball game were AI. Like the fans were like CGI, you could say, more so. Like they were like animated but you couldn't really tell unless you paused it. If you search Paul Pack Disney Plus Extras or something like that, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, the reason why we bring this up is because the TL was in an uproar about this because people feel like this is exactly what uh, the entire strike was about and what SAG after is fighting against. Um, there's a tweet by this girl that I want to read that I have legit right here. You saved it. If I got it in the bookmarks. It's by a lady, The Film Drunk. She said, a reminder that Ben Affleck and Matt Damon were cast as extras before their big break. They've talked about how grateful they were uh, for that and how it introduced them to people in the industry. AI-generated extras is taking that away and is nothing but harmful to the industry. And me, Damn. you see it. So Terrell's yeah. seeing the, the clip. I, I wish I could show y'all, but damn. Yeah. Um, the reason why I want to bring this up is because I kind of see both sides of, of this, you know? Mm. Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, they were able to just be an extra on a film set and make connections with people in the industry. Um, the same way when me and Terrell went to film school... Their way up the chain in film school is to just get on a film set. Just be a PA. Just, you know, mm-hmm. offer your free services so that you can get cool with the people that actually work. And then when they find out that you're a cool guy and you're a hard worker, they'll offer you a smaller job. And then you take that smaller job and then you go up the ladder yeah. until you become director. It's all about building relationships. It's fucking bullshit. It is bullshit. This lady... The film drunk is saying that AI generated extras is taking away, it's taking that away. It's nothing harmful to the, but harmful to the industry. Lady, first off, they have been doing that that type of shit in a wide form for a long ass time. If we're gonna do a big ass audience of people, do you think we about to get hundreds of thousands of people to fill up this 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 yeah. arena, or we gonna CGI? It? We gonna get fifty people. We're going to get 50 people and, and then, then double all them 50s. And we're going to, yeah. We're you know gonna what I'm saying? CGI to fill the stadium up. So my thing is this. It sounds like excuses. It comes all the way back to what we've always talked about, y'all, which is technology is coming for those small jobs. Those, those CGI extras, it's like seeing the scan and go in, in Safeway. It's the same thing. Because mm-hmm. most of the people that watch this show, they did not give a fuck that, oh, my God, are these fake people? Most people don't give a fuck until you can notice it, you know? Yeah. And I can admit, it wasn't a good job. Like, Terrell, you just saw. It ain't good when you pause. It ain't pause. the greatest. It ain't. You know? It works. 
It works. And if it can cut your budget to do it, they're going to do it. The days of being Ben Affleck and Matt Damon and just being on a film set as an extra and then getting your big break, it's over with. It's a fucking fairy tale. These, you're talking about Matt Damon, who was Matt Damon, and Ben Affleck, who was Ben Affleck. This is like saying, this is bullshit. Michael Jordan went to a, a basketball camp for free. So they should make all basketball camps just sign up because Michael Jordan, he went, yo, that was Michael Jordan, though. You can't just say because he was there that the Hold same on. career that Ben Affleck and, and Matt Damon got mm -hmm. from being a, as an extra. Oh, we're taking that opportunity away. No, we not. That Hold opportunity on. is still there. It's just in a different place. But if you're the next, what if you're the, or could be the next uh, Matt Damon or Ben Affleck? Meaning you're a good actor. The path is going to be different for you now. Or it's going to be tougher than it was for them because you don't have. And Terrence, that even though like, but that is still a very real path that they tell you, go be a production assistant, even for filmmakers, not even just actors, but even actors get on set and be an extra, make a relationship with the cast and directors or whoever is ancient. But Terrence, no building relationships will always be the way to success. You don't get to be Did Margot Robbie. Have to build relationships. Yes, she did. She did. And also, there's some pretty privilege in that. But Margot, my thing. Margot Robbie 100% you... built relationships. Are you kidding me? Wolf of Wall Street was her first thing that she low-key did for real. She did like one small so thing key, So how do you get on that set? How do you get on that set? This is what I'm going to This You what build relationships. Say. You she did have sound to like the parent that's telling their kid to go to college. Get your degree. That's not true. Go back. Get your masters. That's not true. Because I do, I do agree that the the AI is coming for jobs and that the the old ways aren't the same. But so let me just re let, let me just realign the whole conversation right here, just to make sure we're okay. talking about the same thing. We're set because what I'm talking about is how the Matt Damon, Ben Affleck being an extra on a film set, those days are over with. That path to success is a very old and traveled path. If you are the next Matt Damon and the next Ben Affleck, they're going to figure that out somewhere else. Your story, won't, your story won't be that you was on a film set. These days, you have a phone. You have an iPhone. You got a computer. These days, you can do your own work. It's almost like, like I said, your parents telling you to go get a degree and then go get a master's degree. And that's how you can get this job. When low key, if I put real that's work right. in, I don't need a degree. If I'm good at it, they're going to say, we want this guy. Nah. And look at this bitch ass nigga know I'm schooling him. Play with somebody else. He's actually right about because the fact that you do. It is different because the same way Matt Damon and them had to get on set, you do have a phone. You have and a it's way. it's not just a flip phone no more. It's literally, you can, you your can resume record. can go way further than, they was trying to get motherfuckers to get them to audition. Right. But it is still, it is still, the, the reason why I was talking about relationships is because at some point, it don't matter what you post or how many clips you have up. If the right motherfucker don't know who you are, we've talked about it on the podcast a lot. It's not about what you know. It's not about who you know. It's about who know you. That's true. If you don't have those relationships where somebody can say, hey, let's get that one right there. Or you know what? That smile, like Margot Robbie did have to audition for Wolf of Wall Street. But I might not be right about this, but I'm pretty sure she had to have a relationship with somebody so that she could even get to the audition. Think about it, T. If you, if you want to be an actor, you got to know somebody before you can just audition for the Leo Marty, Marty film. You can't just say, oh, yeah, I'm here because I heard it was an audition. You won't even know where that motherfucker is. Dog, life is about being at the right place at the right time. I get it. All I'm going to say is when you're at that right place at the right time, it's your talent that keeps you in the room. Margot Robbie could have shit the bed that audition, and she would not be in Barbie that made 100 mil. But you're discounting how she got in the room, and that's why I don't think life is about How am I discounting? Because you're making it seem like she just saw a poster that said audition, and then she got the role. Terrell, look, you going, 
You, you doing a Marty You film? doing what people do where they make excuses and say, oh, but I'm she, not. oh, but she Damn, had nah, I'm saying, Terrell. No, You sometimes. just said life is about being at the right place at the right time. Sometimes. Sometimes in order to get to the right place, you got to know a motherfucker that can get you there. And then you got to do what you got to do in, once you there. Okay. I'm not disagreeing with you that she has people that she would need to get her foot in the door. What I'm talking about is when your foot is in the door, it's your talent that keep you there. Like, these people saying that Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, they were extras. They had talent. That when they were picked, they took it from here to there. You, If you have talent, do not waste your time telling yourself that a nigga who got on 40 years ago's opportunity isn't available anymore. Well, you know, when Magic Johnson got on the Mav Magic, he just did a couple layups. What do you look like saying that? Now you right. nigga, there's niggas who have highlight tapes. If you a cinematographer coming up right now, right? Mm -hmm. For all of my people in film school, they literally told us to go get on a film set. And that's how you get your clout. You know what I say? Shoot. That's how you get clout. Because you know what they're going to say? They're going to say, hold up. You're, who shot this? Him? Yo. Think about the respect that people got in film school. Hey, I saw this that you did. Oh, he did this and this and this. You never talked about his ladder. You but only Terrence. talk about where he's seated. What you, you, I think we both, I think we're talking about the same thing, but different ways. Because you're right. I do agree that you got to shoot. But people get on these sets. <laughs> listen. People get on these sets and they meet people. <laughs> Terrence, come on. You, you, you're, not keeping it, you're not keeping it on it. You're not listening to me. You're listening to yourself. You're not listening to me. I'm listen. listening to you. I'm just reading. Go ahead. People get on these sets and they meet people. And those are people that they use to help them shoot. Or you might, Terrence, think about it. If we would have never met um, Cisco, remember what was his name? Disco? Not Disco. What the fuck was the, what was the guy's name that let us borrow the camera? James Nyhouse or whatever. He let us get the C300 oh, yeah, so we could shoot. House. What's the name? Yeah. Had we not been in an environment where we could maybe make a relationship, we not have been able to have that Terrell, camera. Terrell. So, so you're killing so, so me listen, with listen, this. Listen, listen, though. I'm like, saying, I get it. I get it. Like, no, like, wait, you fuck? don't get it. Because you're right. You do need to shoot. But at the same time. Oh, my God. You, at the same time, you do need to go get on some sets and build relationships with people that are already in the industry. You do. Because you're going to need people. To see. I'm not saying you don't need anybody. I'm just saying to say that since they're putting out AI-generated extras, that it's taking away our yeah, ability to get post. into the intro. Move the goalpost. Listen to what you the girl just said. said. The girl, nah, I'm talking about what you just said. You just said, I, you, people say you need to get on a film set. I say just shoot. Yes. Hold up. Like you this lady is saying, try. hey, I want to be a film extra, and now they're making AI extras, so now that opportunity is fucked, so now I can't be like Matt Damon. Hold up. Just because you see that this is happening, you cannot cry wolf, man. You can't, you can't be the person that's crying about it. Fix your shit. Terrence, if that's the case, then maybe all the actors should just shut up and go back to work. Terrell, see, that's a, now that's moving a goalpost. Nah, because, because you, that's a very real issue, did, and it is taking away opportunities whether you like it or not. It's taking, that's like saying an AI job is taking away opportunity. No, bro. Yeah, That's like saying... Bro, like, think about the nigga that work at the Chick-fil-A. The this is like the person, and y'all gonna say this is a bad example. But to me, this is like complaining about the fact that they getting rid of, they getting rid of checkout, and they only got self-checkout in there. This is bullshit. And you somebody work, and could be working at that register. You like, yeah, but also, somebody who would just be standing there scanning shit can now be more productive elsewhere in the store Terrence. While customers do this themselves. Terrence, you sound like a, one of those, you sound like, like a Republican. Are we really going to fight for the cashier job? No, If now, it could be easy. Now, Terrence, now you write, if, if you had a business, would you rather have self-checkout or pay three people to run the registers? Now, you're right. From a business standpoint, you're right. But you got to think about if the cashier that has been doing that 
Or you're a cashier. You can't say, oh, don't complain about losing your job. Just fix your shit and go uh, find a, a job. A, a, you and can't do a that, Terrence. extra is not losing your job. You're a fucking you're losing extra. losing your job to AI. The same, they're the exact same thing a as the cashier that's extra losing gets job. free food and $25 a day. That is not a job. That is Terrence, you having an opportunity to be a part of a You discounting film. the fact that those extras will make relationships. They'll go be extras in other places, and then they'll make more relationships. And then it can turn into, you know, you get in a bigger role. Now you're an extra that has a, you're a speaking extra. Now you're somebody who has a mini role. You might be the motherfucking main character's person they met in a library. And you're building your resume. Terrell, I get that. And that 100% is still there. The same way you can go to a four-year college, get your degree, go back to school for two more years, get your master's degree, then finally get your job. That, pro- that is also a pathway to success. I'm just saying when they tell you that there's a shortcut and you just want to stick to the old path, you can't get mad when that old path is fucked up. They don't give a fuck about the roads anymore. It's bumpy. No one gives a fuck about that road anymore. They not shoveling. They not pushing shit off that road. That road is vacant because everybody is taking the shortcut. If you want to go the long way, you have to deal with the path. You can't say, oh my God, my opportunity is not available when there are available opportunities, you just want to go about it in a 1990 way. What are we talking about Matt, D- Matt Damon and Ben Affleck for? Why? Why are we not talking about how people like Lupita and Yango got on? Why are we not talking about people like... Terrence, okay, then now you get... Now, okay, now you... Right. People who... Lupita, you talking about Lupita that went to fucking... Uh, didn't she go to Juilliard? Are you serious? The hardest school to fucking get in? The same school Viola Davis went in and got to? Her first fucking film was Steve McQueen? relationships talent Terrence you still gotta have relationships Terrell going to school is not a relationship Matt Damon and Ben Affleck I think both went to film school look it up maybe I'm wrong on that Matt Damon Matt Damon and Ben Affleck I don't know I don't know how they started didn't Ben Affleck or Matt Damon go to a prestigious ass school one of them did all I'm saying is Lupita got on with Talent, even though we all know the Lupita, what happened with the film helped. But why are we going all the way back to the get a a motherfucker who got on in the 80s? It's 50 years later. I'm with you. I I like what you say about the shortcut because it is kind of like. Let's stop complaining about the old way to get there. You're the person in the store that said this is ridiculous. Y'all only got self checkout open and there's no. What, Lupi- what? Lupita went to Yale uh, for acting. Yeah. But she still, you got into Yale. You oh. went to the Y. It, you cannot just get into the Y. All I'm going to say is, at a certain point, oh, are you complaining about the cash here at the front? Really? You're the person that's saying, y'all ain't got nobody on the register. It's tough checkout right there. Well, I need help. Christ! <laughs> 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 what now, the fuck do you need help with? Now, I will tell you this. One thing you write about is the fact that the world is changing and you either get with it or get left behind. Mm-hmm. Because like you said, like you can take that long path if you, path if you want, but the people taking the shortcut, they're going to make it there before you. They're going to be there before you. And, and they're going to see how the industry changed. Terrell, think about how long it would have took you to get on a film set and how the film industry was changing from when we went to film school. Yeah. By the time you got on, a lot of the shit that you're learning, it was completely different. Completely different. We, we literally learned how to pull focus. The standard, you got to measure. With a tape measure, I got to say that the distance is, I'm he's 60 feet, feet away. Yeah. Oh, my God. I just have to take a tape measure from the camera, measure here, and if his ending point was there, I would just have to you would make measure your, there, and I would have to make my marks on your lens. Now, and then look, soon as we was about to graduate, as soon as we was about to graduate, so 20, 20, the end of 2012 is where we learned that. 2014, that's literally two years. At the, in, in 2014, before we was about to graduate, they had this motherfucking, I still have a picture on my phone, it's a $10,000 Ari uh, focus puller where you don't even have to measure. We was like, hold on, wait, so who's going to measure? And that dude looked at us like, we, oh, have, yeah, we have Yeah, we have this. We so can, can just, just see sit it. right here on the side and look at a monitor and just make sure to focus. And we was like, oh, shit. So what about all of that shit we just learned about? Mind you, you paying. And that's why going to art school is a scary thing. And I always tell people, like, yo, you got to be prepared for that. You can go to art school, right? 
and then you're going to learn how to paint with these brushes. And then you're going to take two years. You're going to get a job. You're going to figure out how you're going to get on your feet to pay the art school back. And right when you go to get into the industry, if you ain't go straight there, they're going to say, okay, so we're going to use this brush. And you will say, uh, what brush is that? Oh, this brush came out last year. Mm -hmm. But your education is two years old. You know how to paint. You know how to mix the red with the mm -hmm. blue. And I'm going to get some purple. They got now a digital thing where I don't got to do all of that. I could just hit this button right here and it's purple. And now guess who has to learn? Again, the motherfucker paying school back. <laughs> yeah. These motherfuckers <laughs> just said, they know. And you then, paying school back and learning again. Uh -huh. And you asking him, hold on, wait, did he say, what button did he say? Because <laughs> I got to pay my bill later. <laughs> it's tough. I swear, I swear bro. I swear. <laughs> it's, it's funny, but dark. <laughs> it is funny, but dark. It's funny, but dark. Did you see? See, do you remember the episode of House of Cards? Well, I'm going to see how y'all Netflix memory is. You remember the episode of House of Cards where Claire had to lay off them people? And, and the lady was like, "These are we're laying off people that have careers and lives here. And she was like, well, we just have to do what we have to do. And the lady did not fuck with that so much that she quit. The la uh, Claire ended up going to a coffee shop, and it was just a middle-aged lady there. And look, that. she didn't know how to use the register, and the person had to step in. And that was her realization that, damn, you know what? I threw all these people back out into a... A playing field that was just that was a crazy sick. scene too because it that's, was real. Yeah. That's when she first started changing. That's when she started getting on her presidential. Joy Joe, Bush. Joey Bush. Joy Bush. <laughs> <laughs> <But it's> just, <laughs> that is so random. <laughs> the way them niggas say his name is funny. Joey Bush. Joey. That's my shit. How we do it. How we do it. Like this. Like this. Get crunk. Big, 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 big. That's my shit. Shout out right. to the motherfucking South. The young bloods. <laughs> hey, look, we were talking about it. Lord John. No, if you ever, li if you ever listen to any of that shit, look. Mm, 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 mm. Don't you know that joint? Uh, mm, mm, mm. What is that joint? Mm, 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 mm. I know what that is. Just know this nigga, Lord John. Don't start no. Won't be no. He had one of the best runs. His era was crazy. And that's why. Oh, boy. When, that's why when we doing 50 years of hip hop, y'all can't leave niggas like that out. Yeah, like what? We I don't give a fuck about Jada kissing them. We know they was there in New York. Can we talk about the South? The South. Because they really been running shit for the longest. Y'all created it, but these niggas have been on top longer than anybody else. The mm -hmm. South been running shit. Out of the 50 years of hip hop, the South been running shit for the last 25 for sure. We should do a 50 years of hip hop video. Okay. We could include everybody. Y'all know how y'all fuck with the jam sessions? And I shouldn't say this because y'all gonna be like, yeah. <laughs> but that's what we should do a real years. 50 years because we can have everybody. Wayne, we can give everybody their flowers in Not one. Yet. You know? If we really gonna se celebrate 50 you wanna years. Go back, you wanna go back to the hip? Hot, hit it to the doom, 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 doom. You dress like the nigga that would listen to that. I hate that he said it because you know who you dress like, and that's why I was laughing at the nigga earlier. You dress like Denzel Washington when he was at that boxing match with the teeth, with the black hat and the button up. You look just like that. That Denzel, what this nigga was talking to me, I said this nigga look just like Zell. This nigga looking just like him. Uh, it's this hat. This hat definitely looked like hot. Shout out to Enoch Powell. Cold Brews at checkout. But yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is exactly the hat type that he had when he was there. He was wilding that day. He must have been drunk. He was turned up, moving around, being social. You ever seen the video where Jay-Z was trying to get his attention? He was yeah. <laughs> swinging the nigga off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, we do have to talk about this. We might going to stay too long on it because we did talk about it a little bit last week. But we wanted to run our thoughts back on the Jada Pinkett Will Smith situation. We wanted to say some quick shit about that, right, Terrell? Yeah, I was. Terrell's mindset has changed, and I guess me a little bit too. I just feel like Jada kind of started to contradict herself a little bit. You know, like after we did the podcast last week, all we had was that first post where it was like Jada's book. This is kind of what she's saying. Yeah, and it was the, the Chris Rock. She said she would have yeah. Chris Rock. Yeah. As the week went on, I just have to say. Some of the shit just started not making sense. Like you said, Chris Rock, don't talk to me because you thought it was, it was rumors that we were breaking up, but that was a rumor and we stayed together. So my thought was, oh, okay, cool. So we'll check them on a the disrespect. Then you say, he called me his wife that night 
and I was surprised because he we we hadn't used that in years. It's just not good, Jada. Because this man went up on stage to smack somebody, said, keep my wife's name out your and mouth. And that's what you have to say? Like, why is it that? And you know what? I started feeling like bad for Jada at one point. Because I'm like, everybody making Jada the villain. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Her relationship not perfect, but nobody's relationship is perfect. And since her shit is public, everybody trying to pile on her. But then I had to kind of realize, like, it's Ja like her. That's coming out. You, why are you sitting down with fucking Steven Jackson and Matt Barnes? Why? They should be interviewing. They knew I'm, not gonna limit, I'm not going to limit the, who they interview. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shout out to them. They, all the smoke. They've been doing it longer than a lot of these new niggas that have been doing it. They have. They I have. I'm going to say that. But why is Jada, if I'm talking to Jada, I'm going to say, what the fuck are you sitting down with them for? And now you starting to contradict points you made. That's when shit started to get muddy. Not yet. Because you're starting to contradict yourself. And I feel like the Tupac thing, you are a married woman. Tupac is not just a nigga you knew growing up. Growing up. If Tupac was a dude named Tucson, and it was just this young dude that she knew growing up, and then Jada just had this friend Tucson, it'd be one thing. This is Tupac. We all love Pac. So we're running, we're, we're listening to you. And we, we, it's starting to seem like, a, you know, we all fucked with Pac, so you start to look kind of like a fan in a way, even though mm-hmm. she had her relationship with him. It's just the now part, though. Like, why now? Like, we're hearing so much about, like, is that, I mean, I guess that's a big part of her book. Mm-hmm. I just, it's just the whole Pac was about to marry me. You see people coming out and saying, no, he wasn't. He was going to marry Kidada. But then he wasn't going to marry Kidada. He was going to marry the other chick. Who move her whole life type shit. My, so it's just people are starting to poke holes in this shit now. Because you keep talking. And like you not talking about like what she started saying. She said, I've been through the gauntlet of criticism. And I want to sh- be able to finally share. And it's like you're talking about what? It seemed like she just wanted to write a book. Like Will. Yeah. And she got her whole family. And I did want to say this. Will went to, you know, just fast forwarding. Will, you know, they, she did her big release in Baltimore, right? Mm-hmm. And where, she where from? she's from. And Will was there. And what did Will say? Will asked the question. This is a question that I have for you. Will asked the question, can you... Yeah, lay your head on that pillow. <laughs> <laughs> Will Smith asked the question, can you love somebody forever, no matter what? Meaning, no matter what they did, do you think it's possible to love somebody forever? And then he said, uh, can you always show up for somebody? Can you just always be there for them, even when you don't agree with what they're doing? And that's a big-ass loaded question. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's a loaded question. And a lot of people, I would listen to The Breakfast Club. They had people calling in. You know, and answering the question, and people saying, nah, fuck that, I can't do that, not Jada. Well, Jada did, you know what I'm saying? But to me, it's a loaded question, but it it depends on, I feel like there's different cogs in this. Wow. Oh, man. You know how you get hit with the music thing? What, um, what music thing? You know, or j- you just hit, hit with music, uh, with just, just with music. Music is just that. Low-key, I agree with Will. Can I you, do. Can you love somebody forever, even though... Y'all have differences and stuff like that? Yeah. yeah. Can you support somebody forever, <laughs> even though you don't agree? That sounds like a marriage. Fellas, low-key, did you see the video of the dude whose wife was talking to him in the car and he was just like this? <laughs> and it's, He's like 80 years old and it was like, fellas, we're in for the long haul. Like, this shit won't stop. Yeah. This motherfucker's 80 years old. It's like, think about the realness and what he said. Can you love somebody even what? Can you love somebody uh, no matter, forever, no matter what? No matter what. He left it at that. No matter what. And Jada's what? And his what, of course. Because like, Will was, we they don't know the dynamic of the relationship. Yeah. But they loved each other no matter what came up. And then he said, can you always be there for somebody even if you don't agree with them? The reason why I said music, because when I think about that question... I think about one of my favorite Drizzy songs ever, Keep the Family Close, where he say, 
If I ever loved you, I always love you. That's just how I was raised. Yeah, that is me. If I ever said that I loved you, that ain't never going to change. That will never change. And it ain't that I'm in love with you. Yeah. It's just the love that I have for you come out of what has happened to me. I don't know what happened, man. It just happened. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's so random. You are a weird nigga. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most worst delivered line ever, but it was in such a pivotal part of that great ass episode. We get over it. Look, it just hot bond. I would have said, "Cut! What the hell was that? You look like you didn't know your line was coming." But anyway, <laughs> to me, if I ever told you that I loved you, like I told, uh, or I always say this: when you broke up with your girl before G, right? Uh -huh. I bet one of the last things that you told her. But one of the last things that you say when you break up with somebody is what? I'll always love you. Well, I bet you told Shorty yeah, that. Yeah. Didn't you? Well, I haven't been there. I, I, my shit was different from yours. Because my relationship was... It don't matter. You trying, see, he, see, but, he trying to put his, he trying to put his gap in nah, because Nah, because the last, you person that I was, the last person that I dealt with yeah. on a serious, we were in a relationship. But I didn't say that. I did say, I always have love for you. That's it. Even it's though, the same thing. It ain't loving them. It is the it love. Is, yeah. It, that, that don't go away. You it, was cool, but I always, for real, Jolly like, have love with you, love for you. But even though you was fucked up, even when I Jolly like, got even when I got cheated on twice, it was like, I'ma always have love for you. But I would be lying if I said that that love was the same. You know what I'm saying? Or if there was even love to this day. Because when I look back on those people that I said that to, I don't feel the same. I don't feel like I can say I love that person. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. exes or people that I used to say I love you to every day. I don't feel that same for you. So I maybe I don't always. I would hate for anything to go wrong with you. But yeah. you know what? I, I feel like to me, I don't limit it to romantic relationships. When he says, can you love somebody even though you don't agree with them? Can you always show up for somebody? A lot of y'all have friends that want to be rappers. And y'all know them niggas can't rap. But y'all still support them. And it, it never would change. Because you love them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We have people in our families, right? Because we get online and we like to judge motherfuckers, right? But a lot of people have people in their families that are weirdos. Mm -hmm. Uncles that you know do weird shit. Don't bring him around. Uh, or you cousins get... or your, your mom and dad might have did some wild shit. But you love them no matter what because... They're your family. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And you just take whatever comes with it. This motherfucker was fucked up. Remember that year he did that bullshit? Mm -hmm. But that's my cousin. And I love him. And he still got a spot at the cookout. He still, we, I'm going to still bring him a plate. So I don't limit it to romantic relationships. But if we want to stay there, because that's just, that, I feel like that's me taking the easy road. But ro romantically, it is like a, I don't know if I believe in that. You can't tell me that the people that you fell in love with years ago, Today, I still got love for everybody that I ever you said that I love you. Still got love, that, but is that love? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. And I'm not afraid to say that. I'm not ashamed to say that. I do. I don't know if it, I don't mm. know if I would call it that. I feel like I still. Why not? Because I don't think it's love no more. I think it's, I see exes all the time. I think it's love because when I see you, I don't think about nothing but if you good, if you if you straight. Love is nah, yeah. That's it. That's I would, Love is the fact that if I found out you was doing bad, I'd be sick. If I found out that you got hurt, I'd be worried. If I found out that you passed away, I would be sad. You a part of my life. You me at twenty three. That's me at twenty five. I don't own. You don't do nothing but experience people, like they say. You don't own nobody. Even A Train right now. I can't say I own her. I get the pleasure of experiencing what I get. You know, I'm going to do the best that I can, but low key, God forbid, if something were to happen with me and her, it ain't like, unless I'm real live hurt, it would still be love because of everything that's happened up to now. That's why I was like, yeah, I like what you said. What Drake said at the end of that, that track. See, if I ever told you, I, if I always love you, I, if I ever told if I ever love you, I always love you. That's how I was raised. He said the same way I'm, I'm out here still feeling away. Like I'm, I still feel away. 
same way I realized on a day to day that all my lessons be, just be friends are friends I don't have anymore. Yeah, that's the first of all. That that song is From not, us. and the niggas tried to tell me that his al- that album is not a classic on Twitter. Y'all want y'all would rather hear y'all would rather hear niggas say, "Oh my God, I'm a legend." Fuck out of here. Fuck you, niggas. Um, Y'all would rather hear a nigga croon that he's a Terrell, legend. Okay, we get it. Come on, your point. Um, but I like what you said about I can't believe you niggas. Um, I like what you said about how this was me at twenty three, this was me at twenty five, and if I ever felt bad because maybe that is love. Because to me, I'm going back to the romantic side of it. Nah, yeah. But that is love because I do have exes that if something happened to them, I'd be like, damn, you know, or or if they got hurt, you would feel like. Damn, what if you found out it was out Your here down ex bad? Hit you right now. And she said, I'm down bad. I'm not the one you can hit. I would feel bad, but I'm not the one you can but hit. But this is my thing. The love that you have for them, you won't let them drown. You're not gonna jump in the water and save them. Terrence. You're not gonna jump in the water and save them, but love will at least have you do this. Somebody gotta help this person. Hey, this person need help. Even if Let she said she this. needed money, you would Terrell not you not the you not a you not a raw nigga like but that. But Terrence, I have you gotta think about everything you have now. Right? I ain't saying you gonna let's put that put at risk or pay it. Nah, I'm just let's saying you gonna nah, tell hold her, away. Let's keep the same energy. This is what you need to do, but now, I can't. Now let me ask you this. Because you see, I've been in that situation before in my relationship now. And almost where, where I was almost in hot water because too many exes hit me up on some they need shit that's not a relationship shit. But people just feeling like they have too much access. And we get that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So let me ask you this. If your girl's ex, right, let's not even use a recent ex, but let's say an ex from when she was 22 years old, yeah. right, hit her up, say she, he, he's down bad, he was wondering if she could whatever. You would not want her to do it. I wouldn't. And I'm not telling you to so, do it. Exactly. I'm saying. But would you... And, and as the person that's being asked, you got to weigh whether I want to help your ass and deal with my current being upset about it, or do I just let you deal with it how you're going to deal with it to retain the happiness that I have now? Do I introduce stress to myself for you? Where is the stress coming from? The girl that you with now that don't like the fact that you did that shit. If one of your exes, Terrence, came back on some, oh, I'm grounding shit. I'm going to point to the life rack. Your girl ain't going to like that thing out. Your girl ain't going to like that thing out. Terrence, <laughs> <laughs> you got my fucking nerves, She ain't going to like it. Terrence, you, you know, know, what women, you not know how hype. women are, Because bro. if your girl, if, 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 if it's your girl, Terrell. One of your girl's exes hit her and says, I fell on real hard times and I need this. Your girl is not going to say, I'm sorry, but I can't. She's going to say, you need to do this and you need to try to do this, but I can't. And and that's all I'm talking about. Love will keep you from cold turkey. Like love, when you say I love you, Mm -hmm. but I always love you, it's like it'll make you answer the phone. And all right, because you're right. Everybody, the money conversation is far. I'm down on bad. That's far. But saying you will always love somebody, if it was real love, then you answer the phone if they call. Let's let's leave the money, but switch it. The person you love do a GoFundMe for you know somebody in their family that you know needs some help or something. You normally you know that person. You know what I'm saying? Or they. The person that you, your ex, started GoFundMe. Think about it. That's not, I thought we was taking money out of it. Now, we're taking money out of it. But we, I, said, I said, let's put money back into it, but, but make it a little bit more. Do you think your girl will have an issue if you donate into your ex's GoFundMe situation? Well, uh, if my ex to starts me, a GoFundMe and I, and I, because something happened. You top donor over there. <laughs> because something happened. Are you kidding I, me? Look, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. To me, but some people do have issues with stuff like that. I'm just saying. I gotta say some shit. You know what, y'all? This I'm, whole like, I'm gonna con- say some shit about my last relationship, and we gonna say if you think this was fucked up or not. Okay. You know what? I can't, cause I don't want to disclose whatever you know info. Okay. So I actually can't. 
Okay. Which <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything. Okay. But <laughs> did you get in trouble for the last podcast you did to say? No, I'm just saying, you know how you say, I was getting ready to say something that I've done before while in a relationship for an ex, but I didn't want to say anything too specific. You know, okay, I don't yeah. want anybody right, yeah. out. For sure. But I'm just saying, I don't think that, think about it. You don't have this connection with the person that you used to talk to like that. Like, it's not like I'm introducing a, we going to talk every whatever. But I'm saying, look, your, your girl gets a call from her ex. Her phone rings. Uh-huh. Right? Even if you're not going to answer the phone, you still going to see what's up with it. And it's niggas that Parents, can hit that's her phone not true. that she wasn't in love with that she'll probably be like, oh, whatever. And I don't care. But I feel like if you did spend a certain part of your life with somebody... I just noticed you got that ring on that finger. Do you know what that signifies? Yes, it does, ladies. Boy, you need to take that and put it on that right hand. I fucked it up. I thought I had it on the right hand. No, you had that on your left, boy. You only wear that when you make that vow for God. <laughs> you ain't made that. You ain't made that podcast reveal surprise. I'm married. <laughs> Bro, going to be going crazy. This is insane. How? <laughs> And <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, this is what I'll tell you. If my girl ex call her phone, yeah. Today, if my girl ex call her phone, she can answer it, and I don't give a fuck. She will not answer. Why? She will expect me not to answer. My thing you is, don't this. have this access. My thing Terrence is, is about th- access. Turn no, it ain't. It's just it about is. this. This is my thing. Because if they feel, if you gonna answer when I call, I know I always got access, and they can't have it, Terrence. You would not be okay if your girl ex. Call her phone and she answered and he just said he wasn't Terrell, doing good. I wasn't, I, I mean, this is my thing. If the nigga called you and he just said he wasn't doing good, okay, whatever. My question is, why, the, if why did calling, you even pick up? Because, bro, my thing is this. Why did I get a call? Why did you pick Your it up? Your ex calls, her ex calls, answer it. Because what is he calling for? He could be calling and saying... You know, it could be anything. And my thing is like, yo, I'm not a, I'm not insecure at all. I'm not. If, if this nigga calls you every night, then that's a different thing. If he keep calling you saying he got whatever, but you said your girl ex called, she can't even answer the phone. She, I, I wouldn't. Well, I don't think you should answer the phone because I don't think people have, should have access. I told you I got burned this way. Is that access? This is my, it is. It is, and it's not even access in a weird way. Because it's, my it's just look. like, yo, you don't even know have, what the fuck is going on. I used to have exes that would hit me up and ask for the most random shit. Hey, uh, don't you know somebody that do... Hey, you can read that. Come on. Don't you know somebody that mount TVs? You worked at Best Buy, right? Okay, yeah, see, that's some, that's some nuts But shit. this is my thing. Yeah. You picked up the phone. So, even, so you if, you, it. even if you say, look... Ah, whatever, ever. You still pick up when they call Terrence, you giving him access. I'm sorry. You it's just not leave. access it's because like you me. have to shut that shit down. Do you know how we say girls never cut anybody all the way off? They always leave that door open. Yeah. That's what that is. Correct. Okay. The nigga can text him and they'll be like, my ah, thing I'm is in a relationship. If I have an ex hit me and say, yo, didn't you used to work at Best Buy? I'm going to say, uh, access. that's why you called me? Yeah. It, well, yeah. And I'm going to say, well, look, I got to, you know I'm saying? Now I'm in a relationship. You can't call my phone ass and nothing like this because you already know how that's about to look. This is the type of nigga that I that am. You have to, but I'm you not going to be dealing that. with a bunch of that. That's why I would answer the phone. Yo, what's good? Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, nope. That's it. I just don't. Th- I wouldn't even answer. Because my thing is, that's why, see, you not me. You not like me. Because just like, and, and like I told you, you said I'm a point to the life raft. And what I tell you. Your girl not going to even like the fact that you did that, bro. And there's no point in doing it and causing friction. It shouldn't cause friction. I would not be mad if my girl ex called and said, yo, trust I, I fell on hard. I, I, I did this and now I need this. And she said, yo, I'm not about to do this, but you can do this. I'm not going to be like, wow, why did you answer the phone? Yo, you had a whole life before me. You also human, though. So I'm putting that motherfucker back on the motherfucking ring thing. <laughs> <laughs> you also human though. So think about this, Terrence. As humans, we have doubt. We create struggle. We create scenarios. Your girl says my ex. You, you see your girl phone ring as her ex, right? Or you see you, your girl give you her That's phone. That's happened before. 
You girl, your girl. You sitting with your girl, she get a phone call from a bruh. Yeah, or you looking at her phone and you see a call from fuck is Malcolm. You see a you look, you see a call from the nigga that you know is her ex. You say, oh, you talk to this nigga? He called you, and she say, yeah, he just wanted to know about you know where he could get his whatever. Even if you trust her a hundred percent, that's just gonna raise red flags that weren't there, and that's she a- could have dodged that. If she would have just not answered the phone. But this is my thing. Because now I got to run with what you're saying. And even though I trust you 100%, I'm still human. Yeah. And insecurities are built by two people. True. Not one. Not one. Two all, people. All I'm going to say is this. Security comes with reassurance. Reassurance comes with real action and not just plans. Reassurance is I told her this. Not, well, she knows... That ain't reassurance. So my thing is, if you're not able to offer reassurance in the right way, then mm-hmm. you're right. You cannot move like that. You're right. Because what people lack in this situation is they definitely not giving mm-hmm. no type of reassurance. And they are putting in situations like that where, oh, you used to work at Best Buy, so what is your... Oh, nah. The, if, you're, if it's a situation like that, fellas, answering the phone is a one-time thing. Mm-hmm. When I say, if I love you, I always love you, that means if you're in some trouble... I'm not your lifeline, but I'm also not standing by and watch you drown if it, if it came to my doorstep type shit. And low key, I have not been in situations with people that would abuse that. I think that is a good... Uh, that's the way that I wash my hands at all my situations. You know? It, it, you get to a point where you pass what happened. Now it's like I move forward. Yeah. Like all of that shit is behind me. And low key, I'd be lying if I said I didn't learn something from what me and this person had, me and that person had. So low key, it ain't really about always having love for you. It's more mm-hmm. so always keeping respect within. Like it ain't really love. It ain't that I love this person. It's just that I once did and that will never change. Not that not the love part. The fact that you did love this person. That actually really happened. Yeah. These niggas get with motherfuckers, and then they act like, man, fuck this motherfucker. Whatever. That was just a... That would be disrespect. You know? Yeah. Think about the relationships you weren't proud of. Mm. Yours. Think about that person. Ain't it kind of fucked up? Ain't it kind of fucked up? What's fucked up? You're not proud of that relationship, so you really don't give a fuck, but that person could have looked at... I was with Terrell. And they appreciate that little... I think people... Especially now, especially when you start leveling up, yeah, or you start to progress in life, it don't even have to be you becoming a fucking whatever, but you start doing better for yourself. People will start to, people will start to appreciate you in a way they ne- didn't appreciate you when y'all was together. One hundred. Like, oh yeah, that's one of my exes. Yeah, you know, you know the Mallory Bros. Yeah, I used to date the one on the left, Terrence. Yeah, I used to date him, but you know, when y'all was together, she treated you like shit. Mm-hmm. You didn't give a fuck about me, but now that I'm. Doing something that would make you look better for me being even in your past. Think about niggas that go to the league. Or you blow up as a rapper. And now this chick get to say, oh, yeah, I used to date ESTG. I'm not about to make a big deal out of a motherfucker that's talking in the front, uh, out front of the building. Like, you're saying, oh, she can't come to the front of the building because we ain't giving her access. She's just standing out front. You want to say, oh, yeah, I used to talk to him. You talking about, uh... Uh, like a stop that I'm not at anymore, like a place that I no longer reside. Like I'm not there anymore. And that's why it's like, you know what? It's not me saying that I'm leaving a door open for everybody I once talked to. It's really more so about yourself. That's why Drake said it. If I ever loved you, I'll always love you because the love that I'm saying that I have, it ain't bullshit. It ain't for the moment. Like a lot of people. Yeah. If I ever really said it, I really meant it. Yeah. And because I know that, I know what love is. And love don't necessarily die. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I feel like you love. Just because you love her then, it ain't that you always will love her. It's just you just did. You yeah. loved. So now that you know that you did that, it's a certain respect that you have to keep. I'm not about to let you drown because I'm with this new chick. Hold up. See? Your girl that's is drowning where you and will get, in the water that's where you, where you will get in trouble with it's, your girl. It's three of y'all. Your Shit girl, like that. your ex is flapping in the water. Oh my God, I'm about to die. 
You can swim. And it's just y'all three. You're going to let her die. You're going to let her drown. Or say, damn, I hope somebody else come get her. This is what you don't or realize. Or you going to jump in the water. Do. This is exactly what's going to happen. You're going to jump in the water. <laughs> this is what's going to happen. There's three of y'all, right? Your girl now, your ex is already drowning. You standing there with the life, the life raft, right? Yeah. So you throw the life raft in. I got to save her. You jump in the water. <laughs> now, guess what? <laughs> now you drowning. And Why am I drowning? You? I can swim. Okay, but you trying to save her. And you only got one life raft. So guess what? You need another life raft. Who got to throw it? Your girl. She not going to throw that motherfucker. Y'all should have just let her right. drown. Now I can drown. And now I drown. Yeah, because you put yourself in that hot water. I hate this nigga. You should have done it, bro. That's why I'm saying. And my, and my girl, ex was up. Drown. my girl is a life, literally a lifeguard. Like she can swim like shit. If her ex was drowning, you want her to save the nigga and do mouth to mouth resuscitation. Yes. I would not have a problem with her saving this nigga's life. It's his life. Is she gonna save him and then start fucking him? Terrence, I the just fuck are feel we talking like about? I, 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 you a good nigga, right? You a good guy. So you so, wouldn't want. You could put your life on the line for this nigga. What if you drown? You can swim, Terrence. But that's the thing. That, these are the questions that you not thinking about. You putting your life on the line for this nigga. I got a son now. But he's about to die. Think about my situation. He about to die. You can die. No, she can't. You trying to make it seem Terrence, like life dogs she's die. fighting over a lion. He, she can swim, he can't. But you know what? You see how they move the goalposts? Guess what? I see the games he play. He dressed like Officer Hoyt, but it's this training day. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's still a training day. Damn, what are you talking about? I'm not moving the goalposts. I'm saying these are the questions that you're going to be faced with. Trying to do too much. Hey, look, y'all leave in the comments. This is a very good question. It has folded straight into our, 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 our course of action. This is a, the, probably the biggest course of action of this part. All right, bet. Let's go. Yeah. No, that, yeah, exactly. That, that was it. Uh -huh. You know? That's it. I only got hey, hold on, wait. I got to say this. <laughs> we just had that whole conversation that can be based around the whole premise of the song, Keep the Family Close. What the fuck do you think? Y'all, Nick, I have seen people say that the new joint. Uh, For all the dogs. What's uh, the, the intro from that joint? The Virginia, Virginia Beach, Beach joint. People are saying now, mm -hmm. low key, this might be better than Keep the Family Close. Fuck no. Hell no. I, I, am, the I am legend joint. The I'm a legend. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. If I die. That shit, get it the fuck out of here. Bottom of the list. Keep the family close. One of his most vulnerable, introspective. When he did it, all the other intros weren't like that. The nigga was talking about free smoke on more life. This is when it was like, oh, shit. This nigga right here, it was like the apex of the nigga that made Marvin's room. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Come on, bro. We did a whole have it. We did a whole conversation about it. Anyway, course of action. Course of action. We only got one uh, following that joint. It's a funny one that I, I was gonna ask Terrell. I don't even need to look at it. You want a date with a girl, right? Mm -hmm. This is just whatever. You want a first date with a girl, first time, right? Yep. Everything's cool. Literally everything's cool. Y'all been talking. You know everything's whatever. Y'all haven't really had too many conversations. You wanted to wait for the date to kind of get to know Shawty, right? Uh -huh. which, which means y'all ain't had a whole bunch of FaceTime shit. So it's still fresh is what I'm saying. You're still a little nervous. She gets a drink, you get a drink. But you notice that she pulls out a honey pack, squirts it in her drink like a... In her drink or my in, drink? In her drink, like sweetener. In your drink. I mean, in her drink. Uh -huh. And she say, you want some? What's your course of action? This my girl? I just told you, you're on a first date with this girl. Oh, I'm on a first date. Oh, that means she trying to get active. That's <laughs> not what you going to do. <laughs> Go ahead, pull me God. up. Oh, I didn't know we was teed up. <laughs> you teed tee already? <laughs> Hold up, let me catch up. Terrence, if, but because if, if that's your energy, first of all, I have been out. I have uh, been oh, on, you got a honey pack? I got a honey pack. I already took one in the I already got one in the car. <laughs> You don't, she don't even know I popped my she honey. She didn't even know I got the black packet. <laughs> <laughs> you got the black market joint? I'm going around the cup like how they do the, uh, the, the, the drink with, with the honey. Yeah, no oh, bullshit. I'm licking the, the cup. <laughs> Give me that. Oh, shit. 
But hey, look, if she if she trying to get active like that, then hey, look, she telling you everything you need. Fellas, the, if that happened, the, <laughs> fellas, the reason why I brought this up is because as look at all of you niggas. Oh yeah, <laughs> she know exactly what time it is. She obviously ready. Fellas, that wouldn't throw you off just a little bit. It would. It would. Because it's like, hold on, wait. But that tells me. The honey pack in the alcohol is already like, oh. Remember when Nunu said that she can tell everything I need, I need to, to know, know about, about how he skate? Yeah. If she do that in the drink, that tell me everything I need to know about how this about to be. I don't give a fuck what you. Now, I know how short-lived this relationship will be. But you're still going to try to hit it. I will. But that's what the goal will be now. It won't be. Let's say I went on a first date with Shorty, thinking that we was about to be in a relationship. You, you know thinking you about to get to know Shorty? I'm thinking yeah. I'm about to. But once you do that, it lets me know. Oh, okay, cool. I can take you out of this category and put you in this category, which is the I'm all just, over the honey pack. What if yeah, that was your baddest? You what if that's your wife? She did. Yo, this your marriage story. You're telling you putting a honey pack in the drink on the first night. You telling me you just want to fuck? <laughs> I actually, actually, on our first date, uh, she had a honey pack. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Hold on. The first date was the the blue shoe. Yeah. The second date was the honey. Yeah. <laughs> first of well, all, look, that's she plumbing. And you said you eating smarties? And she said, nah, this is a blue chew. If a girl's eating a blue chew. Oh, you're right. That's not for both. Yeah, if you got a different blue. problem. She eating the chocolate joint. Y'all know they said Nah, they Terrence. Stick with what you said. She got a you bunny. Is it Easter? Da- is it Easter? You, you got the, the chocolate bunny? Day- you want to eat? You on a first date with a girl that's eating a blue chew? <laughs> you find blue chew in the in the car. Whose is this? And she say, "Oh, that was mine." Oh, damn! You in the car with Shawty and you find blue chew? <laughs> Just drop me off. First of all, you in a terrible situation if she driving. <laughs> situation drop me off yeah no 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 you've done enough you've done enough <laughs> i got a uh, course of action for you good 17 years from now my son is 18 yeah you get a phone call 3 a.m right mm-hmm. he say uncle t you gotta come get me terrell why you asking me a stupid okay, ass hold on, well, get stupid the second part of this okay yeah so you go get him where you at I'm a Morgan State University. Think about it. That's an hour and a half away. <laughs> yeah. And so he said, I'm at Morgan State University campus. I'm in the little lobby of the uh, library, but you got to come pick me up because I don't have a ride back. Then you say, do your parents know where you are? No. They think I'm at home. No, look, they think I'm at Reggie's house, his best friend, but where he was supposed to be. Reggie lived 15 minutes up the road. Yeah. You go down there and pick him up, right? You find out he was trying to be fresh. You know, some girl. You know, some girl in Morgan State. Shit went left. His ride bailed, whatever. He ain't have a way back. I told him he couldn't go mm. to Morgan State. He said, Uncle T, please don't tell my dad. Because he told me I couldn't go. You done already picked the nigga up. You already picked him up. It's funny because this is exactly what I was talking to Candace about <laughs> earlier. <laughs> What do you do? That's why Candace said me and crew gonna have a talk on the way home. <laughs> Low key. Do you tell me? Because you know what G said? Terrence would tell you. I said Terrence would not tell me because he's going to value the relationship between him and his nephew. No, I won't. And that's what you don't know about me. And I feel like that's what you don't you know about would me. not tell me right away. And that's what y'all would learn. That I value my relationship with you before... Crew. Crew is my nephew. Feel me? But I, me and him was born here. Even though that's my nephew, I would never put my nephew relationship, I would never let that put, because that's also a kid. I'm not going to let child's play fuck up my adult relationship that's already like baked. That it's not already yet. legit. This is what I would tell crew. I would say, you just fucked up. I had to come all the way out here. And you want me to let you off the hook. Right? Uh Uh-huh. I would say, we're both going to go to your dad's house. (laughs) And we're going to tell this nigga right now. And I'm going to, we're going to get there. And I'm going to do the talking. And you're just not going to say shit. Because I know how to talk to this nigga. (laughs) I'll walk walk in and he's going to be like, what's up, dad? (laughs) 
And you're going to be saying, and I know this nigga Terrell, because Terrell not a yeller. Terrell is a, I'm disappointed. He's going to be the dad that tells crew that, I can't believe you did this. No, yeah, for sure. He's I'm a very yeller. chill dude, you know? So I just tell, I would, I would just tell Terrell, you know, we was young, bro. And we made mistakes before. So what I'm doing <laughs> is just taking you from eight lashes to four. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really just, because look, you have to be a parent in that moment. And I'm yeah. not going to rob you from that. Like, and I feel like he know, I feel like if I don't tell you, he know Uncle T is a vassal now where I, I can get out of trouble with that. And nah, this all one village. We used to know growing up, me and Terrell, was, we was raised in my family. If you put all that food on your plate, you better eat that shit. Yep. And if you don't, you, what you going to do? You're going to sit there in you front of it. sit there in front of it. Yep. There was no relative in my family, not my aunts, not my uncles, that you could get past when we was at that age. Yes. You try to throw that we plate away if you want. <laughs> my uncle would be like, Sandy, Sandy, you see him with this plate? Like, yo. You, Are you standing yeah. there like, you standing there like, please, <laughs> I'm trying to get in the moon bounce. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to chill. <laughs> and your mother say, sit down because you chose to put all that food and y'all could call it abuse or whatever, but... When you they went, say it takes a village, it, you didn't have to even eat it, the food either, either. You just had to sit there for another 30 minutes in front of it. And then they say, go play. Right, right. Look, when they say it takes a village, it really does. And I've always thought that I would never be scar to crew. I would never be his scar. Yeah. He's going to get two Mufasas. Like, that's real. That's it. He don't get a scar where I'm a low key, I don't like his dad or like, nah, like your dad is a legend. And you will always know that. Not to be on all sentimental shit or whatever. No, yeah, for sure. But like, I appreciate on it. that, like, you know your dad is Mufasa? Not, oh, I'm not throwing him off. Like, no, nah. that's real. That's yeah, real. He don't that get a my, scar with me. That made my eyes water a little bit. Yeah, that's real. <laughs> that's real shit. <laughs> but, uh, it's NFL funny. Picks. <laughs> it's funny because G was like, it, when we were talking to Candace, she said, the best thing for you to do is to tell him you are going to say something, or else oh, I'm. Oh, I am. It. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to say it. That so, is how you do it. You got to convince him to say something about it, or else I'm going to have to say. Or oh, I'm going to have to say it. And it's right because you're right. I do value my relationship you with said, him. Look, if we go out of town and we need somebody to rely on, if you the one that um, let him off the hook, now I can't rely on. Now you can. Yeah. So you fuck your relationship I with fuck me. Fuck my relationship with him for the kid. Now, that was some real shit that you said. I appreciate it. And I'm glad that crew will have an uncle like you. 100. 100. For sure. He, he's, he's, a, he's blessed. He's, he's lucky. He got two Mufasas. That's it. Okay. Now, and we both have the same movie suggestion of the week. Correct? No. 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 <laughs> well, then I'll go first. Martin Scorsese weekend. This is the biggest weekend of the year one of it. Uh, one of. Oh, it's it not is. as big as Barbenheimer. But this man has not missed. And his latest uh, uh, film, he just smacked you with a three-hour uh, mask on, 30-piece, uh -huh. on Netflix, <laughs> right? With the Irishman. And it was fire. 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 Go back and watch it if you haven't seen it. Before that, he gave you Wolf of Wall Street, mm -hmm. which was fire, Oscar-nominated, Golden Globe winning. Yep. I think. Golden. Because uh, yeah. Leo won the Golden Globe. Yeah. I think. Yes, yeah, something. Because it was best comedy. Which best is comedy. Bullshit. Yeah. This man is literally, we talking about, and, and, and it was funny because it's like, yo, he's done so much great shit. This is one of the real godfathers of this shit, mm -hmm. of, the, the, of the craft, movies. Yeah. I mean, cinema. We're, walk, we're watching somebody on the Mount Rushmore just walking around. Yeah. Like, he be making TikToks and shit with his daughter. It's, it's the crazy, craziest thing. Martin Scorsese hit the movie theaters this weekend and go see Flowers of the Killer Moon. Mm -hmm. Leonardo DiCaprio. I thought it was Killers of the Flower Moon. Oh, shit, is it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Go to the theaters and see Killers of the Flower Moon. <laughs> hey, look. Did you see what they said about Leo and his overacting? No. Uh, they said that um, Martin Scorsese said... There were times where he would look at Robert De Niro and go, you don't need to do all of that. And I said, damn, that means Leo was in his bag. You know, he got that, uh, ever since, I don't know what it is, but that ever since he did not don't look up, 
But like the revenant. I maybe it's revenant, but like oh, Leo be changing his voice. And don't look up, he was like he had that thing. <laughs> yeah. And he had anxiety and he talked like a regular guy. Uh-huh. In uh in Wolf of Wall Street, of course he's He's a, a loan shark or whatever. Shorty. He's a yeah. you know so he's a he's a stockbroker. But then you got Hollywood. Uh, Once upon a time in Hollywood, where he's Rick Dalton, and I think he really running with the he's really doing uh, yo. I'm, the even though he's been shit, doing yeah. this, but it's like yo, I think we really about to see top tier Leo and with this one. The beauty of the relationship between Marty and Leo is that they've done so much together already that those notes that he can give are going. He can be way more honest. And up front to get the product that he wants because of the relationship. It's kind of the same thing with Samuel Jackson and Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. Quentin Tarantino can say, Sam, no, 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 no. Let's not do that. Because I've known this man since 1990. Like, we've been making movies together for years to the point where the chemistry is just, it's like Future and Metro. Like, yeah. it's just undeniable. The chemistry undeniable. And when you can be honest with somebody, when you have chemistry like that with somebody, the notes that you give them create just a better product. So mm -hmm. I already know it's about to be fire. They have not missed. Leo and Leo, I said it in the, uh, if you had the Patreon, District 9 tier, when I was talking about flowers, Killers of the Fire Moon, the biggest thing that I said was that these two have not missed together. They have not missed together. Mm -mm. They have not done a movie together, and it was bad. Everything they've done has been great. <laughs> Turn up, man. NFL picks week seven. It's crazy to be here. Um, I was getting sad earlier because I said, damn, we basically halfway through the season. And it's basically over. I know, right? And it's a sad, sad, sad thing. Sad, sad, sad. The first thing we got to do is pay respect, of course. Last week, shout out to Whole Nine Watch that's keeping us locked in through seven weeks. Yes, turn up, turn up, turn up. Uh, wow, I don't think I wrote down my picks last week. And that really just, I got week six right here. Hits me. We got our ass whooped by the Chiefs. You already know that. Uh, we just really suck. Like, 16 games in a row. Anyway. Hey, Atlanta. We going to rise up. <laughs> <laughs> Did that to y'all out, out big beans. We got to show respect to the Browns. Mm -hmm. Went out there and beat the undefeated San Francisco big respect 49ers. this week. Without Deshaun Watson, lost to P.J. Walker. Y'all should be pumping y'all chests. Vikings went out there and beat the Bears. I feel like we called that, though. And it doesn't really count because you beat the Bears. Same as the we call it that. Yeah, we call it that. Our one win is the Bears too, which just sucks. Uh, the Texans went out there and beat <clears throat> the great defense Saints. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. did. So shout out to them. Gotta the give a Texans, shout out to them. I got it. The Texans, CJ Stroud and them. Giants still haven't scored a touchdown in, in how long? Can y'all score touchdowns, Giants? Christ. Damn and y'all just paid y'all quarterback 160 million, right? Yeah. Uh, Jets, New York Jets. When I then knocked off, they knocked off the Eagles. It was beautiful. And do you see how they talk about the Eagles now? Mm-hmm. The I Eagles, you see the Eagles. See now, y'all see the Eagles who they really are. Not that fucking great. Yeah, all right. They still five and one. Okay. But I feel like they can be beat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Last year it was like I don't know if anybody gonna beat the Eagles. This year, not the same. Jalen Hurts. They put I, out the I, blueprint said, on how to beat the Eagles. They put the blueprint out the Jets. When I said what I said about Jalen Hurts, I was called a hater. Now look, he's he's still I, he's a That's great true. he's a great leader. He's a great leader. He's great in that system. He is smooth as hell. He's great in that system. The tush push, the way y'all he runs, but he come to Washington and be a scrub because <laughs> that's how they all do. That, that's how everybody does in Washington. Last but not least, speaking of Washington, did y'all see my man Jordan Poole go off for 41 last night? I saw Don't it. say I didn't tell you so. That's all I'll say. Because it was a pool party last night. <laughs> <laughs> know what y'all calling it? That's what we call it. That's his, that's his shit. Let me say this before we get into the picks. Dallas Cowboys went out there and Justin Herbert. I'm a Broncos fan. I've been watching Justin Herbert for a long time when Tyrod went out. I remember when, when, when uh, Brody got his start. And we have said, and we have sat back all these years and watched. And I had to watch that game last night. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Sunday night, Monday night, 
where Joe Buck and fucking Aikman gave him every pass in the book. I swear he's an NFL darling, but he's not fucking clutch. He's a fucking NFL regular season merchant. When it's time to step up and do what you got to do, he folds. But Lamar is the one that, oh, yeah, I can't pick Lamar. He can't win a playoff game. But all these other people get criticism. Josh Allen gets the criticism. Everybody get criticism except for this motherfucker who can't win. Fuck out of here, Chargers. Y'all some shit. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a Chargers agenda. Week seven. Week seven. All right, y'all. We're going to start Thursday night football. If you're watching this or if you're listening to this, then there's already a winner. So we're just going to make our predictions. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to go with the Jaguars. At first, I picked the Saints, but Jaguars on a three-game winning streak. They're at the top of their division. Uh, yeah. When I did, did what they had to do against Indianapolis last week. But I'm, this is what happens. This is what happens, mm-hmm. Jaguars. Look, I'm picking the Jaguars. Watch they go out there and fucking lose. Nah, I feel like like I watched the mic'd up and uh, I was watching Trevor Lawrence and he's growing as a leader. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Even yeah. the way he talked on the sideline. Um, I watched the mic'd up. I'm gonna go with the Jaguars to win just because I like what they're doing and I feel like the Saints. Oh shit, this is at the Saints. That's why I said watch the Jaguars should win three game winning streak. I'm still gonna pick the Jags. I'm still gonna pick the Jags to win. I don't trust Derek Carr and the Saints. All right, Sunday 1 p.m. games. We got the lot. We starting off with the Lions five and one versus the four and two Ravens. Yeah, I know I got a Lamar agenda, and to me, I love this Lions team. Mm-hmm. I think the Lions, you know, they've been they've been in conversations as the best in the NFC, but I think they're going to lose to the Ravens in Baltimore. A week after everybody saying you degraded, you we got to put respect on the Lions. You see, everybody saying we got to put respect on the Lions because mm-hmm. they now they five and one like everybody else. But I feel like y'all gonna go out there, y'all gonna lose to Lamar and them. I just feel like it'll happen. And if the Lions win, that'll tell me a lot more about them that we already know. At first, funny, at first I picked the Ravens, but now I'm picking the Lions. The Lions. Yeah. I think the Lions, I put respect on them, 5-1. and one, I'm not going to let that go overlooked. And, and when you count last year, they're like 16-2 and two or some shit. They really have not been seeing a whole lot of L's since the last since last year. I think yeah. they ended their year with like two losses or some shit. Oh, you need a phone charge? You know, here, put my phone, put my phone over there on there. Wow. Look, that black cord right there is a uh, joint. And your phone on charge, so that's what it is. All right, back. But yeah, the um I was just saying that we need to put more respect on the on the Lions name as a team. And to me, I think the Lions are gonna go out there and beat the Ravens. The Ravens are a lot the Ravens low key be a toss up, bro. They do. They do, but I just feel like Lamar gonna go out there and find a way to win and then it'll taint the Lions a little bit. Where where you see the post? Right there. I think it's gonna it'll hurt the Lions a little bit if they lose this game, but I don't think it'll hurt their chances. And I actually really do want them to win, but I'm I'm just gonna pick the Ravens because the Ravens are at home. Nah, yeah. All right, bet we're gonna go a little faster. Raiders at Bears. I'm gonna just go ahead and pick the Raiders. I don't even I didn't even and pick anybody in this game, but I'm picking the Raiders too. I just can't I can't pick that Bears team. I um, can't pick the Bears either. Browns at Colts. I'm gonna pick the Browns. I think I, the Browns are gonna be riding on a high. And they're going to win again. I also picked the Browns. I mean, is Deshaun Watson not playing again? I'm not too sure. But you also still got Minshew. That's what I was and, thinking. And That's Colts. why I was like, I know Anthony Richardson just went out for like the season, right? Just He's out for probably. season. That's deflating as fuck. It is. Your hope. You know what I'm saying? But they what? But look, they just got what's her name back. Taylor, right? Taylor, yeah. I'm going with the Colts over the Browns if the, if Deshaun Watson don't play. But if Deshaun Watson plays, I'm going to pick the Browns. Pick the Browns. Mm-hmm. All right, bet. Bills at Patriots. I'm going to go with the Bills. I'm going Bills. I think it's their division. It's a division rival. They're going to be at, what's the name? They looked very mid against the Giants. They did. They did. The Patriots can 100% go out there and win. This going to be the week where the, it's going to be hard. Y'all get the Giants this week. Oh, at, yeah, it's rivalry week. That's why I was just getting started on it. Go ahead. life. So who you picking, Bills and uh, Patriots? I pick the Bills. Fuck. What? I want to pick the Patriots. The Patriots suck, bro. But they don't, they're not good. But it's a rivalry game in Foxborough against these Bills, who low-key, I feel like they got the Bills. The Bills are soft putty to me sometimes. Just went out there and etched a win out against the Giants? I'm going to go with the, the Bills, though. I'm going Bills too, just because I don't, I can't trust that Patriots squad. Mm-hmm. Commanders at Giants. 
Commanders at Giants. Giants fans, let me tell y'all something. We're going to go out there and whoop y'all ass. Straight up. Hey, look. And got- I hope that y'all got that fuckboy turf ready because we ain't trying to see a whole bunch of injuries. They got, uh, yeah, because y'all always lose somebody on the Giants field, don't y'all? Everybody does on that fuckboy field. That's where Aaron Rodgers' career went down here. Damn. Hey, Giants look, fans, just know we're getting ready to bust y'all ass. And, I, and this is my thing. Y'all are fucking trash. I don't care what you say. Who the fuck is on y'all team other than Saquon Barkley? They got a little squad. Bum! Kayvon. I like Hyatt. I like Thibodeau. That's it. I feel like the way that our squad lined up, if Sammy Sosa go out there and get the cook in, we're not losing to y'all. We should, we should put up an easy 30 on you bum-ass niggas. Straight up. I'm we picking- better not... Commanders. Please. <laughs> We go out there and compete mm. with the Giants. I mean, compete with the Eagles. We compete with the Falcons. We lose to the Bears. Do not go out there and lose to this bum ass Giants team. These fucking bums. Okay. The same. The, do you know the same officiating crew that didn't call that blatant pass interference on Curtis Samuel last year? Same uh, crew that's doing this year. So. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm picking my commanders. Four I'm picking three? the commanders just because y'all can put up points, and the Giants can't put have, haven't shown that they can put up points. Now Saquon goes crazy against us. He yeah, he love Washington. He love Washington, and he's he gonna be home. And, and I got him in fantasy. Style. And another thing I'll tell you is we've given up a 100 100 yard receiver in our last like four or five games, bro. Yeah, and y'all Kayvon is gonna have a day. Because Charles mm-hmm. Leno or and who who's on the other side, bruh? <laughs> I, I don't. Sam Howell is the most sacked in the league. Yes, and they were talking about how right below him is uh, Justin Fields and Danny uh, Danny Dimes, Danny Dimes, and both of them are questionable because of their injuries from getting sacked. That's why they were saying, "Yo, he can't take too many sacks." Damn. You can't <gasps> get sacked and then. Think you're just gonna be healthy. You're yeah. gonna eventually snap something. Oh, yeah. Okay, we got the last 1 p.m. game is another rivalry: Falcons and Buccaneers. I am gonna go. I'm gonna go Bucks at home. I pick Bucks at home too. I Bucks wanted to pick home. the Falcons, but I said, you know what? Bijan is special, man. He is. He's special. He is. But I'm gonna pick the Bucks. <laughs> he is, but like he ain't look so special against us. Yeah, he look. Okay, cool. Well, he we both- did. Y'all like, but yeah. Yeah, I had a decent week fantasy with him. We're going Steelers at Rams. It's a Cooper Cup coming home party. Let me just tell y'all this. I'm picking the Rams. Cooper Cup, who has sat on my IR for the first six weeks. I'm sorry, for the first five weeks, right? Mm -hmm. I started off one and three. I'm now four and three. No, I started off one and three. I'm now, I started off 0 and 3. Mm-hmm. I'm now 3 and 3. He Third won. in the league. In the, in, in the next, I'm telling you, I'm about to, I'm about to I'm so spank trash. y'all. Because I got Saquon back and Cooper Cup. I feel like this Rams team is going to win at home against this Steelers team. I'm picking the Steelers. I think the Steelers have an opportunity to turn their, uh, they 3 and 2. They could be 4 and 2 right here. Mike Tomlin don't have losing records. I think they're coming off a bye week. So, like, I think the Steelers come off very impressive uh, after the bye, and they put respect on their name with a win in against the Rams. The Rams fucking suck. I have Matthew Stafford on my fantasy. I have Cup and Puka. I got them both. The Rams, I have no faith in the Rams. All right, the next 4 p.m. game, uh, I'm picking Steelers, I'm picking Rams. Uh, next 4 p.m. game is a rivalry. It's a rivalry. We got the uh, Cardinals 1 and 5 against the Seahawks. Seahawks. Home away from home. Uh, Seahawks took an L last week to the Bengals. I think they come back home and get a W here. I think so too. I think Seahawks are scrappy. And that loss to the Bengals was a chin check, you know? Kyler Murray went back to practice today. I just picked him up. If he plays, I'm 100% picking the Seahawks. Seahawks? Yes. If, if K-1 plays, I 1,000% pick and Seahawks. You mean Cardinals or you really mean Seahawks? I mean Seahawks, meaning I don't think you about to go out there and what? Cook? 
And you've been got sitting K1 and chilling out? Up. Y'all got K1 fucked up. If K1 plays, give me the Cardinals. And who Hold you going to get out there and throw to? Hold on, watch. If K1 plays, give me the Cardinals. Josh Dobbs been cooking. Who's he throwing to? Dobbs, y'all going to start realizing you got to put respect on that man's name. And he's smart as fuck. Did you see the joint where he was pregame? And he was like, goal post. Hit the goal post. Middle of the goal post. Or whatever he was doing. <laughs> I like that. I said, why don't Sam Howell get out there and do that? Give me the Cardinals. Uh, the if K1 wins, if K1 don't play, I'll take the Seahawks. Ooh, we got a fake-ass rivalry right here. This is low-key a little fake rivalry. Oh, yeah, we've seen each other in the Super Bowl. We gave them that work before. Green Bay Packers, 2-3 and three at the 1-5 and five Russ Nams. Broncos. Broncos. <laughs> uh, I'm going to pick my Broncos to win, even though I know we will lose this game. Loyalty, loyalty. <laughs> I'm picking the Packers, man. I think they go out there and do it to y'all in, at a mile high. Yeah, we're going to lose this game. For sure. It's a 4 o'clock game. I can just see Denver losing. That's how they do. We just suck, bro. Like, we really... It's a crazy that Sean Payton talked all that shit. And now you're worse. Is he worse than uh, Hackett? Yes. Through five games, a worse offense and a worse defense. Hackett had a top 10 defense. You can say, oh, he had Ezra. He was head coach. You know what I'm saying? You made the decision to go whatever with, 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 with EJ. And they made y'all look bad in that game they played y'all. They were celebrating Hackett. It was bad. That was so bad. But I'm going to pick the Packers. I'm picking my Broncos. I'll take that as one L. Uh, Chargers at Chiefs. Last Great rivalry game. of the day. 425 game. They should have made this the 820 game. No oh, bullshit. Um, like I told y'all earlier in this podcast, there is a complete agenda for the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl. Watch the Chiefs get this. Watch. I'm picking the Chiefs to win at home. Taylor Swift mm. gonna be there. Swifty's gonna be there. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm picking. I'm picking, I'm picking the, Chiefs. the Chiefs. Eight eight o'clock. We got Dolphins at Eagles. Let me tell y'all something. This is the best offense in the league. The Miami Dolphins. I'm going to pick the Eagles to lose two in a row at home, and I'm picking the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. I don't think you go, I, I think the Eagles are so fraud, they about to really see again. This is equal to if y'all was playing the 49ers. Yeah. This is like a low-key, this will be a Super Bowl matchup. You know what I'm saying? Watch, watch what the Dolphins do. I'm going to go with the Dolphins as well. I think the Eagles were exposed last week. I think the Dolphins have the coolest coach in the league. I they think do. he is the coolest coach in the league. If you go watch that mic'd up, he is. He's cool with, him with them fucking shades. It just makes it just puts Ron Rivera's arm crossing ass to shame. <laughs> but I'm going with the Dolphins. I like what they got going on over there, and that's I think they a, get respect with this win. Ooh, that's gonna be a beautiful game to watch on Sunday night. But that defense could go out there and do what the Bills defense did to the to the Dolphins and just shut them up. Mm -hmm. You know what? You gonna pick the Eagles? Did the Eagles might go out there and steal one? No, I'm gonna get. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go with the Dolphins. I'm picking the Dolphins too. I just I feel like if the Eagles could win, they at home. Yeah, and it's tough to play in Philly. I just don't feel like y'all gonna be able to stop them from scoring points. And I don't. Th I don't. I feel like once that Miami Miami's defense is not good. Believe it or not, they actually have one of the worst defenses. I just. Don't, I feel like Jalen Hurts in that offense, y'all not gonna be able to put up as many points as them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So we'll see. Uh, but we both picking the Dolphins. Monday night, we got 49ers at Vikings. It's going to be the 49ers show. Vikings are going to put up a fight and then lose. Yeah, I'm looking at that game. Uh, not a rivalry. I don't know why. I feel like, you know, I always say It's always fun rivalry. to see you. Yeah. Uh, 49ers, I'm going to go with. 5-1, and one, 49ers. I'm going to go with the 49ers. I think Debo. Now, Debo got hurt last week. So did uh, CMC. And I think they're both back this week. But I'm not sure. If they have to go out there without CMC again, because Purdy looked a little regular last week. That's what nobody wanted to, people didn't want to talk about it. No oh, bullshit. But if yeah. CMC and Debo do play, I feel like they'll get the win. I, I'm honestly going to give them the game even if they don't win. Because even though the 49ers lost that game, they lost that game because Jake Moody missed the field goal. They didn't not do what they had to do to win. They did what they had to do to win the game. Jake Moody we missed, missed the field goal. goal. Yeah. It would have been an ugly win, but it ended up being an even uglier loss because of the field goal miss. So I'm going to pick the 49ers to win. And every, almost every team in the NFL this year, especially the ones with one win, uh, one loss or two losses, all of them had an ugly win. Like, who just won? The Bills just won this past week. Wasn't it? Uh, yeah, the Bills just uh -huh. won against the Giants, and Josh Allen was like, 
you know, the offense got to step up. Uh, it's not going to be a pretty win. Yeah, we're we going to take that win. Yeah, though. yeah, because they won. We're going to take that win. <laughs> the Eagles had probably more ugly wins last year than good wins, and they mm-hmm. went all the way to the Super Bowl. Uh, do, fellas, do y'all know the that great feeling when you put in a parlay, you put in like two or three parlay, parlays, and you come back and you check and you just hit every one? No, me either. I'm fucking done. <laughs> <laughs> I have yet to have that great feeling of seeing the green on the other side. I feel like I've only seen it like once since I've stopped. I have literally thrown so much money away in FanDuel. I'm not joining you niggas' discords and chats. I'm not. I'm not doing it, even though I probably should. But y'all don't know how much money I've thrown away to just... I just... Bro, I will legit be one motherfucker got a rush for three yards, and they will not give him the ball. And it makes you so pissed off, bro. Terrell's a bum at fan, at, at betting. Nothing new. I thought this nigga was getting ready to have a fan duel uh, sponsorship the way he started. Fellas, have you ever put in a parlay? Nigga said, I'm out of here. <laughs> nah, that shit, was, that shit's terrible. All right, y'all, look. That's going to wrap it up for 172. Um, once again, shout out to the Scorpio. Scorpio season. Y'all up. I guess I'm supposed to fit some shit in on me. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Next time. <laughs>